And we are live. What's up, guys? Welcome to the Friendship Podcast, man. We're here with Steve from Accounting. We're going to talk about starting a business, LLCs, S Corps. Let's get into it. Let's go. And we are back. What's up, guys? Welcome to the Fresh and Fit Podcast, man. It is Money Monday, and today we probably have one of the most important episodes we're going to do for a while. Um, this is going to be one of those episodes that you're going to need your notebook, take notes, come back to it, reference it whenever you're ready to start a business, or if you are thinking about starting a business, this is going to be your blueprint and 101 and how to do this. Okay, and also, guys? you guys asked for it so many times, so now we got it for you today. Yes, Steve from Accounting. Yes, we brought our accountant here, man, to give you all the walkthrough step by step. Um, so real quick before we get into it, rumble.com slash fresh fit guys, go ahead and find us over there. So if we ever do get canceled, you know exactly where to find us. Also check us out on freshfit.locals.com for behind the scenes content. As you guys know, we do a live stream right before we do the show um, on locals. And then also check us out on fresh to fit store to get the merch, hoodies, t-shirts, etc. Also guys, do me a favor. Please subscribe to our other YouTube channel. It's called fresh fit clips guys. We post six clips on there per day, like damn near eight to 10 shorts per day. So if you guys want, uh, bite size forms of a uh, bite size form of the content. Go ahead, check us out over there on Fresh and Fit Clips, guys. Okay, um, and then also we got another one called More Fresh and Fit Clips. We're trying to get that one to 100k, and we're trying to get the main Fresh and Fit Clips channel to a million. So guys, go over there, su- uh, support those two channels because 80% of the people or so that watch both those channels are not subscribed. It's not enough just to be subscribed to Fresh Fit. We need y'all to be subscribed to Fresh Fit Clips as well and More Fresh Fit uh, Clips. And then also check us out on Spotify where Mo posts every single day. And quick little announcement. We posted the Andrew Tate interview um, on Rumble. Yep. Okay, guys? Because um, as y'all know, they took it down on YouTube. And yeah, it's, it's, it's it lame. We can't post our Andrew Tate interviews on on, uh, on YouTube, man. So you guys got to go over to Rumble. We have a bunch of them over there. So um, And they're also them, on Spotify as well. I think we got all of them. All of them are on there now? Nice. Yes. Okay. So all of them should be on there now, guys. We did like, man, a bunch. Like eight, eight to ten, something like that. One of the first. Yeah. So uh, go check it out over there. Also, guys, um, fresh your vlog. Yes, guys, for vlogs, man, we travel when we uh, do our fun stuff. Go check it out. Also, as well, I'm gonna do be doing more live streams on my channel. Just talk about networking and you know more tips. And then as well, guys, join the Seal Network, man. Give value, add value as well. We've got millionaires coming on every week to talk about, for example, success, mindset, business. So go check it out. See you guys in there. And check me out, guys, on uh, Fed Reaction. <laughs> So yesterday on, um, excuse me, I did it on the Sound of Freedom. As you guys know, the movie is a blockbuster hit. It was well, obviously it was an independent film, but it did really well in the box office. I went ahead and watched it with Angie, and then we went ahead and covered what Tim Ballard is really doing, the former HSI agent who now rescues children all over the world. We went ahead and watched the documentary, reacted to it. I explained the differences between human trafficking versus human smuggling because they're vastly different. A lot of people don't know the differences. We watched a couple of sting operations they did with human traffickers. So if you guys like true crime stuff or you like that type of stuff where you can learn a little bit more when it comes to the whole legal process and law enforcement in general, go check me out on Fed Reacts. I do everything from uh, contemporary cases to cases going on in the news with Trump to serial killers to terrorism to espionage to um, – kidnapping pretty much any type of case i cover over there i cover the ynw melly case the ysl rico cases i cover all the cases there um for my former law enforcement experience man so go check me out over there on fed reacts and go get my book why women deserve less but uh, that's all great and dandy but dude we got a special guest in the house yeah we we just wanted uh, to get as many y'all in here before we uh get into the into the good stuff um steve we know who you are. We've known you for years now. Yeah, it's, it's been a while. It's been the like beginning. Three, three to four years now yeah. at this point. The man. Um, we know who you are, Steve, but the audience might not know because uh, you come in here periodically, maybe once or twice a year. Always new people coming in. And they've been requesting this for a while. Can you introduce yourself to the people? Absolutely. My name is Steve Colon. Uh, these are my clients. And uh, I think I was with you guys since the beginning. And it's just it's amazing where you, know, where you guys have come. But I'm a CPA. I've been a CPA for about, uh, I'll say, over 20 years. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm located here in the state of Florida. I've got a couple of practices. And, you know, I'm a serial entrepreneur. I've opened up uh, several different businesses. 
One of them uh, was uh, like a X-ray, uh, portable X-ray company um, in the state of Florida. And then we went national or we sold it to a national company. Um, did a lot of real estate, a lot of investing in um, various real estate, commercial and residential, mm-hmm. kind of like what, you, what you're doing. And uh, yeah, so I'm here and, and right now, um, you know, I focus on high net worth individuals, small business owners, all, you know, a slew of different types of industries and, and, and uh, types of businesses. And I've been doing that for, um, you know, about 25 years now. Yeah. And um, something that I, I want to really highlight here, um, which I think is very important for the audience that's watching, right? A lot of you guys might not necessarily be entrepreneurs. You might be working a nine to five job and you're thinking about starting a business on the side, et cetera. Guys, I was in your shoes about four years ago. In 2019, I was working my government job and I also started my fitness business, right? And I was able to transition from being, you know, a you know regular employee, right? to becoming an entrepreneur. And Steve was instrumental in that and me segueing over in a correct fashion where I wouldn't hurt myself from a tax standpoint and setting up my business appropriately. So for a lot of you guys, you're gonna start as a full-time employee and then start your business. And then at some point, you know, you're gonna wanna quit that business, uh, sorry, quit that job and transition over to entrepreneurship. You need to do it in a very particular way so that you don't mess yourself up because I made some mistakes along the way doing that. Absolutely. And also guys, W Steve in the chat because Steve is giving you guys some massive gems here for free, by the way, and he charges for this all the time. Yeah, so thank you, does. Steve, for coming. Yeah, the platform is well. my you. pleasure. My yeah. pleasure, guys. Thank yeah, you. Definitely. And I, I, this is and and we'll talk about this a little bit later in the show because this this is an issue close to my heart. Um, and you know the, the real thrust of what it is that I'm I'm doing and what I'm going to embark on, and we'll, we'll we'll talk about that. Um, is for you guys. So before I came, I was looking at the um shows that you guys have the late night shows yeah. so i think i went over the past 10 shows and then i did the ones where you guys had like special guests on here mm-hmm. so i know in the beginning when you guys started that and you guys like kind of blew up and and everybody was coming in for the red meat for the drama on yeah. the shows and you're i was kind of looking at like the viewership so i think it was like 10 percent. i was just talking with mo about this and i did i did a little little calculation on it and i think it's like 25 percent now which is good so that means you guys are really getting these guys across from there, bring yeah. them in the door yeah. and getting them over to where they need to be. Yes. This yeah. is where the real alpha is. This is where you guys want to be. So, you know, yeah. props to you guys. No, thank for, you, man. I that. mean, and I've always said it, right? Like they come in because the girls, right? They're, oh, wow, this drama is awesome. But then they realize, oh, wait, hold on. Y'all give um, financial stuff. You yeah. guys teach people how to set up LLCs, credit, buy real estate, become financially free. Yeah, man. Because at the end of the day, guys, if you want to be able to deal with a lot of these ridiculous women in, in, a, in a position where you you have the leverage, you need to have your money on point. And I, and nowadays, they don't teach you any of this stuff in school. No. Yeah. And true mm-hmm. freedom starts with financial freedom as well. Yeah. So ultimately speaking, if you get that, that down packed, you have that under control, you get whatever you want. Amen. Amen. So uh, I guess we could start from the beginning, Steve. So let's say someone's watching, right? And they're thinking about starting a business. Maybe they even start already did start a business. Um, how should they go about registering their business and making that segue over while they're still an employee? So the first thing you want to do, you know, and, and, I'm going to start with this. You know, he was talking about him being a W-2 employee and then doing a side gig, side hustle. So, you know, I would imagine that this this show is going to be speaking to you guys. So if you're going to do something like that, there's a specific way to go about doing it. And it's an area that always causes a lot of confusion. Yes. So I'll Mess go, me up too. Yeah. So when I, when I was um, like in my early 20s, I started a business with my brother. We didn't know what the hell we were doing. You know, we didn't have... Um, you know, access to YouTube and videos and like that. So the first thing we did to start a corporation in New York state, no less was see a lawyer. And we winded up spending $2,500 and we only had like $20,000 collectively to, to spend on this, on this business venture. Mm-hmm. So we started there and, you know, he got us incorporated, gave us a book of like stock certificates with a stamp on it. And I, you know, I brought this, you know, it was really, really good looking like, you know, hard covered binder for my corporate documents and all this stuff. And I thought, oh, you know, this is all I needed. I wasn't a CPA at the time. So mm. then I had to go see a CPA and the CPA said, yeah, never do that again. And I said, well, why? He goes, well, you just wasted your time. You don't, you don't need stock certificates unless you're going to sell them. And I said, well, I'm, you know, it's just me and my brother. He goes, well, you don't need that. He goes, all you need to do is get an EIN number and then he made us an S Corp. So he basically walked us through the process of what I'm going to talk about today. Okay. And kind of what we talked about when, when you were starting your fitness business yeah. and you were structured as an LLC. So most people think that, oh, I got an LLC and it equ- it equates to tax savings. Mm. An LLC does not equate to tax savings. An LLC is just a form of corporate, a form of entity that you can form. You could do it in every state has their own 
limited liability company. You just get on the state department and you can, and this is the, what we're going to talk about on my channel in more detail. Um, but that's the first step you do is you, you, do, you know, select the name that no one else has in that state. You form your LLC, mm -hmm. make sure that name is available. You pay your fee online. Typically at the department of state, they all pretty much have the same type of format and website. Yeah. And every state is different state by state. Yeah. And then, and then you, and then you, you get your articles of organization back. So now with that LLC, what you want to do is you, you want to make it an S corp. The only reason I would tell you to keep and stay as an LLC mm -hmm. is if you want to invest in rental real estate property. Bam. So that's what you have. So that's very important <laughs> because I made that mistake. So yeah. a big mistake that a lot of people make, right? You come from the W2 world, right? Where you have a regular job, right? And you're like, okay, they take my taxes out for me. I don't got to worry about anything. And then you go over, over to entrepreneurship. The first thing people do is they think I'm going to make an LLC, right. but you're saying no, you can start with the LLC, but what you need to do is transition it over to an S corp. Yes. Um, especially when you're a W2 employee. Can you tell the people why that's so critical and why that's so important? Cause I made that mistake myself in the beginning. So if you are going to invest in real estate property for every property that you have, you want to have a separate LLC. You want to separate those to gain the maximum amount of protection because that protects you and your personal assets from the actual asset that is over that particular rental property. Yeah. And let's say you have an incident, an incident, uh, incident, incident where the rent, the tenant comes out and, you know, maybe they fall and break their ankle or break their knee or, or whatever, and they want to sue. So they can only sue the LLC of that particular property. You may have multiple properties such as yourself yeah. where they can't reach over that. So it's, it's limited liability. Um, Lawyers started the limited li liability in most states. And the reason why they did it is because they went into practice together and they were partners and they didn't want each other's uh, clients that may sue them coming oh. after each oh. other. So it limited the liability for each <laughs> okay. That's That's really that's actually how it started. Of it. Yeah. Okay. And then they applied it to real estate as well. Okay. Um, but you could get the best of both worlds because if you're going to operate a business, where you're, you're operating, you're getting income from a from an operational business, not a rental property, then that's where you want to take that LLC and convert it into an S corp. I, I think the first person I heard talk about LLCs was Robert Kiyosaki. Obviously, speaking wants to protect your your assets, right? But Real estate, we didn't yeah. know how to really do it. At home, it made sense for us. Yeah. As yeah, regular business owners. So, so okay, so it's okay for them um, to start off with you know create the LLC, right? Mm -hmm. You can they can go on their website, do it. Don't hire an attorney, do it. You can literally do it by yourself. I know Legal Zoom will let, let you do you it. You could do Legal Zoom if you want to. Yeah. You know, um, you don't really need to. And and, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually I'm going to do because you've done it for me a bunch of times. It's, yeah, it's so it's it very takes like 10, 10, 15 yeah. minutes, not even to create an LLC. It's very easy, yeah. guys. You go on the website and you do it. You pay the the filing fee. You get your articles of um um organization uh, of organization, yeah. which is basically think of it as like the huh. documents that prove you're, you you have a real uh, business entity. Now, once you have that. Um, you, how long can they have the LLC before they switch it over to an S corp in your opinion? So there's a time limit on that. So you can, okay. you can, I've taken it out into two years where you can get like uh, elect for forgiveness, but there's certain things that you have to mark for it to, you know, to, you have to, you should do it as soon as possible. Okay. And a lot of times I get clients because again, they go to an attorney, they form an LLC. And then at the end of the year, when they come see me, mm -hmm. I ask them, are you an S corp? Mm -hmm. They're like, I don't know what you're, what you're talking about. Yeah, oh, I think man. I am. Right. And I'm like, okay, let me check. Uh, did your attorney fill out these forms? Well, nine times out of 10, they don't. Because like, oh, lawyers don't know these. anything about taxes. Yeah. And we're coming in a year, maybe a year and, and three months or so later. Mm -hmm. And then I have to fill out the forms. And then they have now a provision because it's so common that the IRS actually added on their form a two sections where you could just check the box and say, you know, we're, we're doing a late filing election. So, so, there's you start off relief. with LLC, so they got to get it, hopefully get it done within a year, right? And you're saying, yeah, up typically to two it's years. a year, yeah. You can't can to two years, but certain, you got to make sure that certain um, forms were filed in a certain way. Okay. You know, I'm not going to get into that in detail, but that's typically most cases, nine times out of 10, it's going to be a year later and we could, we could pretty much get the, the S Corp. And I remember election. with me, like I was almost at the end of my time limit right. and, and we right. switched it right to an S Corp yeah. right before. Cause I had a, I had an LLC guys that I had started for my fitness business. And then, um, Steve saw, I, I got Steve as an accountant and then he saw I was set up and he was like, dude, you still have a W2 job and you have an LLC. What are you doing? And then we switched over to an S Corp and we'll talk about that here in a second. Guys, real quick, 
all the chats that come in, we're going to read them. Um, I'm going to read them here in a second. But go ahead and get your questions in, guys, because you actually, this is a fantastic opportunity for you guys to ask a real CPA who works with real clients who, um, from a small business angle and real estate, you can ask them all your questions. So all those questions you guys ask us about starting a business and everything else like that, today's they did ask these questions. Um, so going back to the LLC, so you start, do it within a, a year, sometimes up to two if you have certain things in place. So why is it so important to switch over to an S-Corp from that initial LLC that they create? Great question. So because... When um, so first off, let, let me let me skip back just a second. The LLC for rental property is mm -hmm. okay, okay because they con Perfect. they construe that as passive income. Ah, uh, so that's not su that's not subject to self employment tax. Okay, okay, so those are okay because you're going to have a special schedule on your 1040. We don't need to file an S corp return. We just put the rental income, rental expenses. So having a real estate property under an LLC is appropriate. However, when we're talking about an S corp, an actual business difference. Right. So okay. now that's where if you don't make the S corp election, you have to put all of that business activity, the income and the and, and all the business expenses and the profit right inside of your 1040 on a schedule C form. And I think we had a show and we talked about this. That's the number one audited form in the entire IRS. That's the one that okay. probably 75% of people that get their 1040 audited and what is the 1040 form 1040 just for is your audience. personal income tax return that everybody that has a job and, and, and you get you know you're making uh over a certain amount um that you have to report your income on a 10 out of form 1040 mm -hmm. okay so if you have a side hustle and it's an llc and you didn't make it an s corp then you have to put your business activity in your 1040 on a certain schedule called a schedule c and that schedule is what is the most audited schedule it's the, it's like out of all of the the forms that get audited now yeah, the number the IRS? one yeah i okay. detest it like everybody that does that i'm like you need you need to, like some people are like well past the time limit to do an s corp election mm -hmm. and i make them form a new corporation with a brand new name mm -hmm. with a brand new ein number open up a brand new and it's a pain in the ass but i'm like listen you're going to thank me for this later because you need to file a separate form gotcha so if they don't let's say that let's say they stick with that llc and they have their business and they have the, their w-2 job that llc income now has to be put in their 1040 which they're also earning income from their job and that correct. can mess them up correct and so it, you're basically putting yeah. both of your income streams on one form that shouldn't be put for two different income streams and that form is the most audited by the irs correct there's Bam. two departments okay. of exact they call it the, they, they don't even call it auditing they call it examination so there's two examination departments one that is in charge of auditing personal income tax returns which are the 1040s and with that comes the schedule c in there uh, so that gives them jurisdiction over your business oh, okay. i've had people come into my office with like their top line for gross revenue was over a million dollars. I'm like, dude, what are you doing? You're filing this on your personal return. Oh, so now you have a guy auditing a, a pretty good sized company that really doesn't have a lot of experience in the IRS and they're going through everything and they could turn your world upside down. Oh my God. Yeah. Okay. So <laughs> you see what I mean? Yo, where are y'all going to get sauce like this anywhere else, bro? I you don't would know. have to bring an actual real ta And here's the other thing. A lot of accounts are going to share this with y'all. They no. might not know this stuff. Like, this is a big mistake that a lot of people do. They start off a business, it does really well, or maybe even they make an extra thirty, forty thousand dollars a year. Well, guess what? It gets put on your personal tax return, which your regular job, and that is the most audited form. And then they're like, "Yo, what the hell? You got all this extra income? What's going on?" And then right. next thing you know, bam, you're getting audited because they don't look at it like it's a business, right? They look at right. it like this is right. wait, you're making more money now. What's going on here? Right. And, and if, if you don't know, you don't know. It's funny because when I spoke to wow. Steve for the first time, I was like, "Steve, please." I don't want to end up like Wesley Snipes. <laughs> Please save me, bro. And, and stuff exactly. like this will literally jam you up. So, yeah. so okay. So, so that's the importance of switching over to the S corp. So, when they switch over to the S corp, what does that basically do for them? Does it separates that business? So it does two things. Okay. Uh, so one of the greatest, obviously, it's it's a tax savings and it's it's very significant. So when you, you know, obviously now you're taking that S corp and you're having to file a separate return. Uh -huh. So now you return it's 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 going to be an, an 1120 S. That's what it's called. These are the form numbers. Uh you guys can write that down and look it up, but it's that's where you do, instead of doing the schedule C on a 1040, now you move that over to its own tax return and you file. Now that goes to the business side of the examination of the IRS. Those two shall never meet. They don't even communicate with each other. It's two separate departments. Gotcha. You know, you being the government guy, you know how important that is. Yeah. So that's kind of where you divide, you divide and conquer. And because um, instead of making, let's say you make 
an extra hundred grand with your business, right? You're going to be a big fish in a small pond, exactly. putting it in a 1040, exactly. in, in your 1040, right? Right. And then it's going to be audited to fucking hell right. versus you put it in the, um, you file it as a separate business. Right. Now you're a small fish in a big pond because there's a bunch of other businesses that are getting put uh, there alongside you and you filed it appropriately. This isn't illegal stuff. You're doing it the way it should be. You're separate. You're separating the two. Correct. So the other, the other uh, reason is obviously for the tax savings. So, you know, we use very simple numbers. Let's say you make a profit for $100,000, right? So if you file that on your Schedule C on your income tax return, you're going to pay $15,300 in self-employment tax, even before you start paying regular income tax. Oh, So forget about the income tax. You're going to pay self-employment tax because you have no control over that. You got a $100,000 profit. All of that $100,000 is subject to self-employment tax. Well, what is that? That's, that's like the W-2 wage earner when you look at your check. And you see where they take the social security out in the Medicare. Yeah. That's basically the self-employment tax. That's FICA, oh. Medicare. Um, so when you become, uh, you know, you have an LLC and you're self-employed, you have, now you're picking up not only the employer portion, but you're picking up the employee portion of that. Oh. So it's 15.3%. So, if so that's you, just getting taken right off the top. Correct. And there, and you are, you're, so you're getting hit with it twice. Almost right. Well, what, once you're self employed, you have to, yeah, you have yeah. to pay that. So now, what you can save in this one, you'll save like $7,650. I'll use this example. File it on an S Corp return. You have to pay yourself a reasonable wage. So uh -huh. you have to give your, your own self for running that company a reasonable wage, a wage that you would pay someone if they, if you were going to hire them to do that job, like right? a CEO or a manager, whatever it is, you know, you're the president of the company and whatever that company is, let's say you have, you know, you're a doctor and you, you got a medical practice. What would you pay someone to do that job or, or, or so, so on and so forth? When should someone start paying themselves from their company? So that's a good question. Um, you know, obviously if you're not profitable and you know, typically when you form a new company, you form a new corporation, typically the first year you're going to have more expenses than you do income and you might have a slight loss. That's why I like to have that on a separate return because then you get the slight loss. It comes through on a, on a K-1 form and we attach it to your 1040 um, versus having a loss on your Schedule C and then it's netting against your other W-2 wages uh -huh. like you had with, you know, with, with, with uh, DHS. Yep. Um, that looks bad. Now that's a red flag. That's why those, because a lot of the IRS looks at that Schedule C as a way of people that are W-2 wage earners mm -hmm. getting their income down their taxable income because you have no control when you're a w-2 wage earner you can't get your income down it's already reported on that w-2 there's nothing you could do mm. there's really very limited ways for you to to uh you know get your income down and that's one of the ways that people do they'll file at this little schedule on there and then all of a sudden they have a loss and then they'll you know maybe they have a hundred and fifty thousand dollar w-2 wage and a, and a twenty thousand dollar schedule c loss now they're getting their income down Gotcha. So, so you want to avoid so all red flags that might come up yeah. with the IRS to say, you know right. what, let's audit this person because of these things coming up on their account. And that could be a legitimate, legitimate loss. And mm -hmm. I think we talked about this. I had a real estate agent where she was, you know, trying to sell real estate when the when the economy crashed and she didn't sell anything, but she incurred legitimate costs. Mm -hmm. And she was renting, paying desk fee, this, that. And she had a loss. Her husband was making like, I don't know, four or five hundred thousand dollars as a doctor. And she had like a thirty-five thousand dollar loss, you know. Yeah. She these are they were legitimate. She had all all of the receipts, everything, and it got their income down. And you know, so they saw that as an opportunity. That she got audited. She could have fought it. She didn't. She she, she was like, I don't want to deal with it. So she just paid, you know, the penalties and fines and everything. Wow. She doesn't yeah. want to deal with it. Yeah. Versus if she would have, I would have told her, you should have been an S corp. I don't know who you talked to, who did your stuff, but we could have filed that on a separate return, take the $35,000 loss, put it on a schedule K-1, and they would have left you alone. Mm. <laughs> Isn't it amazing yeah. how the, the vast difference just by setting yourself up correctly, how you, when you set yourself up correctly from the beginning, it avoids long-term problems versus yeah. if you set yourself up incorrectly in the beginning, it might be easier. Oh, I just made an LLC. Now I'm like, I, I'm a business owner. Woo. And then you file your tax return. Next thing you know, they're like, oh yeah, uh, right. we're going to go ahead and audit you because you made way more money. And yeah. Okay. But we're told to get LLC as a business owner. Yeah. And just like do that. However, it's great. It's yeah. great. Cause you yeah. get the best of both worlds. So if you're going to run a business and have an operation, then I would say, yeah, be the LLC, get the extra limited liability protection for your assets and also just convert it into an S corp. So in that case, we were talking about the second sense of the hundred thousand dollar case, $15,000, 300 extra tax bill you're paying versus if you did it on an S corp, we could take $50,000 of that and deem that wages 
So you only pay 7,650. The rest is just income. So you don't pay that. So you're just in that case alone, you're saving $7,650. Okay, hold on. Let me just hold on. That was very important. We kinda, I don't want none of this stuff to get glossed over because you're giving these guys so much important information. I really want to hone, the, hone this home because I'm hoping that this episode is going to be something people can go back to continuously, right? And we're going to put very detailed timestamps on this episode for y'all. So two scenarios. You make $100,000, right? One is an LLC. One is as an S Corp, right? Uh, assuming you made the LLC, then you switched over to S Corp. In the first scenario, where you're just a regular LLC working a job, let's say you make a hundred extra thousand dollars right from your business, you are going to be subject to paying fifteen thousand dollars in um, you said self employment tax, right? Self employment tax automatic without automatic. a shadow of a doubt no that's coming off. Yep. So you're going to only net about 85k, and that's before all the other taxes that come in, right? right. So 80 15k is already gone. However, if you had switched it over to an S Corp. You would only be paying about half of that at about seven, seven, seventy five, seventy six hundred. It's an automatic seven thousand. Yeah, because I would say just let's take fifty, fifty thousand, fifty percent of your hundred thousand and deem that um, taxable for self employment tax. Okay, because you could do that on S corp. Okay, and the IRS says you have to pay yourself a reasonable salary. Yeah, and a lot of guys don't do that, and they've been getting away with it. But I think now with Social Security and the situation that it's getting, you know, we're getting a lot of. A lot of little notices and stuff like that saying that, you know, you you need to I think at some point the IRS is going to come back and probably claw back a lot of these returns that were S corps mm -hmm. where the owner didn't pay himself a reasonable salary. OK. OK. And there's a way to do that. Like you should go on and see, like, what is really the market rate for that position? OK. And the IRS can push, you know, push and shove on that. But I think if you put something in there. Yeah. More than likely they're going to be like, oh, yeah, just whatever. Leave alone. Yeah. But if you put a big goose egg on there, um, they're going to be like, yeah. You know, gotcha. now we're going to get you. And okay. how, oh, how much did you take in distributions? Oh, you took 100000 Okay, that's going to be W-2 wage. Now you owe us that plus penalties and interest, and it's a 25% you know, percent okay. for, for a misstatement there on top of the 15.3% the plus okay. the, the, the interest. So we're talking about just off of a $100,000 profit, you're saving $7,500 that you would have had to yeah. pay, uh, you know, double that if you had right. stayed as an LLC. Right. Um. And then not not to mention so and you can't I guess also with the S corp you were saying that you set yourself up um, for better tax um, mitigation as well as far as like is it easier to write things off are there any other benefits? they're about the same because both if you look at a Schedule C uh -huh. on a 1040 and you look at the, the you know it's just basically a profit loss statement okay you know the only thing with the Schedule C you don't have a balance balance sheet okay but you have a balance sheet for the um, for the S corp that's that's the major difference okay but you still can you know. Um, take take the same deductions. Should someone switch over to an S corp, even if they're not a W two employee? Let's say they start their their entrepreneur venture and they quit their job and they say, you know what, I don't even want to work a W two job anymore. I'm I'm going all in on this. So what I would say is, yes, they can. But okay. I would say, when given the opportunity, if you have an opportunity with with whatever your employment relationship is with someone, and I'd say this to everybody, always side to be treated as an independent contractor. If you can negotiate where they can pay you. A ten as a ten ninety nine independent contractor, then do it. And here's why: because by not doing it, you're getting a W two wage, and you have very limited access to get your your income down. But when you become an LLC and you and you're treated as an independent contractor, mm -hmm. you're you basically open up the whole your whole business to to the whole tax code to take advantage to get your income as low down to near zero as possible. Mm. You can't wow. do that with a W two wage. Okay. So if you have the opportunity, if you have a if you have a gig and you're like, oh, he's gonna the other guy said he'll pay me a W two, put me on the books and pay me as an employee. And I always, always ask him, I'll say, is there an opportunity for them to pay you as an independent contractor? And they're like, Yeah, I could talk to them. Maybe I'm like, Well then do it. Mm. Then do it. Okay. I then then we have the whole tax book where we could just write everything off that they can't as an employee. Right. Gotcha. You know, and, and you now. know what? Now that I think about it, when I was an agent, right? And I had my W two uh, thing. So they assign you, right, a six hour. I didn't like that gun. I was like, this gun sucks. So I went ahead and bought my own Glocks, right? But I couldn't write those off. Yeah. And yeah. Um, I think years ago you could have been able to do it. But like when I, by the time I bought those Glocks and switched over, you couldn't. And that was because I was a W-2 yeah. employee. These are very limited. I mean, the only thing you do is like, you know, if you have a 401k with matching and stuff like that, um, you know, that's a different story. But if you have an opportunity, if they don't have any of those benefits, you know, like that, then just try to become an independent contractor. And most employee, employers, excuse me, well, 
would opt for, would opt for that because that's less liability on them. Mm -hmm. That's less hassle. It's just so so easy. Like, oh, I got this guy. You know, just give him a straight check. Give him a ten ninety nine at the end of the year, and wash you your hands know, of it. It's it's a lot. You know, and so, they don't have to pay you benefits or anything. So yeah. it's better on their end too. So for the guys that so um. So should they should they always just switch over to an S corp? It sounds like to me. Even always. If, okay. So if, even if, if you're business, I'm always. So even yeah. if you're um whether you're a W two employee, well, you definitely want to do it if you're a W two employee. But if you're just an entrepreneur, serial entrepreneur, never had a don't have a W two job, you should always you could start as an LLC, but always at some point if it's a business that's generating money, unless it's real estate, that's the only exception the to the rule. Only exception. Exactly. Um, you need to switch over to an S corp. Absolutely. In almost every scenario. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. That's that's fucking sauce yeah. right there, man. Um. Yeah, that's wow. great. Yeah, that was that's really uh, life changing information. And I'll tell you guys this from experience. I made that mistake where I had done it as an um, I was an LLC, right? And I wasn't an S corp. And I was wondering why was I paying so much in taxes? And I'll never forget that that yeah. first year I went to H and R Block. I think I made like thirty to forty thousand dollars extra with my for the first year with my fitness business in twenty nineteen because I had started mid year, and I paid a bunch of taxes. And I was like, what the hell? And then it was because I was set up as a as an LLC, and I had never switched over to an S corp. Right. Let so, me can I, let me ask you guys a question because I don't even know because I, I look at it differently. What's your view of H and R Block? Like as like before you knew me, going there as far as like them being a professional tax company to prepare your tax return. How how did you feel about them? I think if you're a guy and you have a regular job, and you just don't want to deal with it. They're good to go to, but if you're an entrepreneur, you you need okay. a, you 100 okay. percent need need a, okay. like a legit accountant I, that deals with entrepreneurs. I agree with you, and then you know because I like we over the past past years like we look at the H and R blocks and Jackson Hewitts you know, to see what they're charging and, and their rates to see what like how competitive we are. You, you know everybody does it in our area. Yeah. So you know it's pretty much most jurisdiction, most areas are going to have pretty much the same same level, but. I noticed that H and R block in our area, for for instance, um, yeah. we weren't really saving any money at all. Yeah. And the thing with the H and R block is like you have a person potentially that's only gone through a thirteen week tax course, mm -hmm. and they're preparing your return. Yeah. So they have very little experience. You don't know it because they're just following whatever they you know like that's where I would never have someone after thirteen weeks in my firm preparing returns for for anybody. Yeah. <laughs> I will have them preparing them, but I'll look at them. So we have a level of review, like, okay, okay, you know, you can, you prepare it. You're going to give it to, to so-and-so, and then I'm going to look at it. So we have levels of review. They don't do that at H&R yeah. Block. You're not getting they're trying the to get volume. Correct. And a lot of these people, what they do is they take that course, and then then they'll do, like, spend a season there in the H&R Block, and then they try to leave to go, you know, hang their own shingle or yeah. do their own side tax prep stuff. Um so then the next year you go back and you're getting somebody totally different. Well, I mean, I, okay, you know what? Let's just use real, literal, real world uh, th things here. So when I was an agent, right? Um, that first that that first year that I had done a tax return, I made somewhere between like 120 to 150 gross. Yeah. Right. Um, because I had my fitness business as well. I made 120k as an agent. I think I made about like 30 to 40k um, with my fitness business. And this is 2019, right, guys? Because I started the business June of 2019. And then I was also uh, working as an agent, making about 120K per year. So we're talking about 150K gross. I paid that year, I think, like 36000 in taxes, right. 36000 to 40 k in taxes. That, yeah. And I think I, I showed you, hey, this is my 2019 tax returns, right? Yeah. Because um, the first year I worked with you was 2020. I paid, we paid just amount, that same amount of taxes this year, uh, making yeah. 10x. We did, I always do a comparison. Yeah. I'll do it side by side just to, you know, as a, as a final check. And then I'll point that out. Like, wow, look at, look at guys. I made pretty much yeah. last year made over an M right. And I paid pr 30, about 36 to 40,000 in taxes. So I pretty much paid the same amount of taxes as I did when I was an agent with a W2 job and just starting my business, making about 30,000, right. 150 gross as I did making an M. And if that doesn't show you that fucking a guy like Steve knows what he's doing, Right. Obviously all legal because I'm using real estate. I'm an entrepreneur, yeah. et cetera. I get heavy tax um, reduction. Then I don't know what does. I think H&R Block is great for a guy that just doesn't want to deal with it and is a regular W-2 employee and it's easy. But once you start getting into real estate, you're a business owner, et cetera, and things get more complex. Like H&R Block isn't going to do cost segregation for you. No, they're not going to do depreciation. They're not going to be able to um, you know, help you with, with writing off expenses for your business. So no, it's not like you go to your H&R block, you know, towards like I'll like towards the end of the year, my bigger clients, I'll send out notices and we'll sit down at the right before the year ends yeah. to see where they're at, to do some tax planning and then to see if they need to buy more equipment, pull back, see where they're at, see if, you know, make estimates, things, things like that. So, you know, they don't do any types of uh, type of tax planning. That's very important. Yeah. It comes in towards the end of the year. Yeah. So, and I, and um, I mean, me and you've been on the phone before planning like, hey, you should probably spend 
you yeah. know, some money yeah. before the end of the yeah. year, etc. Any equipment that you want to buy, go pick it up now. I remember when we were buying the cars, pick it up now before the end of the year. Like all this stuff is imperative because yeah. it will set you up, right, to pay a smaller tax bill in the future, guys. And again, this is all legal. I told you all before. When you're an entrepreneur or if you're a real estate investor, what ends up happening is you are the cornerstone of the United States economy. Small businesses, real estate, uh, um, small business, real estate, bam, you, you hit this corner right here and you're able to create jobs, create housing for people and you get huge tax breaks. And that's why I was able to pay less taxes now than I did when I was an agent as a W-2 employee. I think the alert is for h and Block is that on some level, it's streamlined and it seems to be easy option because you just go there, get them your documents, information, and they do it for you. But these of access leaves you open to missing out a lot of opportunities. Right. So right. I think they, that they, they have, yeah, they do tremendous marketing too as yeah. well. So they're out there. They got numbers. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I think they're talking about real estate, you know, the most millionaires are in yeah, 90% plus. Yeah. yeah. Should we talk about um because they've asked me this question a bit. You want to talk about our strategy that we're doing right now with the with the real estate? Sure. Yeah. Fuck it, we'll do it. Okay, yeah. we're gonna give y'all some sauce, okay? <laughs> we're gonna go ahead and kill the Twitch, Twitter, Facebook. Kill everything except for Rumble and YouTube. I'm going to tell. I've never revealed this, but I'm going to tell you exactly what um, I'm doing with Steve right now um, as my tax strategy for real estate for all you guys out there that want to um, invest in real estate, etc., and set yourself up for success. Yeah, mine's a great, great guy, man. Awesome guy. <laughs> I I'm, I'm giving you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to Myron. Yeah, and um, like the video. Yeah, and like the video, by the way, guys, too. Um, so this is what we're basically doing, guys. Um. Once I bought like my 13th or 14th property, I pretty much got on the phone with Steve and Roger. As you guys know, Roger is my real estate agent. Steve is my accountant. Um, and we started uh, uh, like strategizing like, okay, we need to put this stuff in a way where I'm not going to, um, so I can mitigate risk, you know, God forbid a tenant tries to sue me or whatever it may be. So we started putting all the businesses into LLCs, which Steve was describing to you guys earlier. But um, and each house, right? It's very simple. Let's say you own one, two, three main street, make an LLC, one, two, three main street, LLC, yeah. bam. And then just go by the address name for each house that you own. Right. And then each of those houses operates kind of like its own entity where that money's coming in. And Steve described it earlier why it's, uh, it's okay, appropriate for an LLC because it's considered passive income. You said from Correct. a tax standpoint. Correct. Yeah. So you don't necessarily have to S corp it. Then I took the next step guys. And this is where the, the game changer is. I went ahead and made an overarching LLC. Correct. Um, out of Delaware. Okay. Um, and that Delaware LLC holds all the other LLCs um, that I that I own. The, which so that main LLC is a real estate LLC and that holds all the real estate property underneath it. So it's kind of like an umbrella corp that holds all the others. And uh, we I guess we could talk a little bit about the strategy there, why that's a so I mean that's that's important because you're separating all your assets for for liability purposes. Mm -hmm. Now necessarily um not you know that doesn't provide any real tax savings yeah. in it because you're already structured you know properly um but the another opportunity too is and i know i know you spoke to the attorney and that was that's a that was a fantastic strategy another one that you could do too is um there's like a, a revocable trust yeah. as well too to encapsulate that so that's probably the next step yeah because now you have your operation business mm -hmm. and you have all your real estate you're going to have some some other assets that you're going to be holding in there mm -hmm. so then that's the next level that we'll talk about is you know to get an attorney to do the trust yeah so let's say something should happen to you we don't know and and then you don't have you can avoid probate and things of that nature yeah. um and Delaware, uh, I think the reason, because my lawyer was suggesting Delaware, I think the reason why is because uh, you guys are probably wondering, like, why Delaware? Um, because Delaware <clears throat> has a very good setup process and um, everything is um, is private. It's not like Florida where that's, everything is out there. Well, that's the thing with the trust, too. Yeah. Because, um, yeah, so so you don't know. You, there's no, there's you can't go on public records and find out. Yeah, what they, like, what my, like Florida. Yeah. Florida is easy it's to find. It's too easy. Yeah, yeah, it's too public. It's, you know, everything's out there, so. Yeah, definitely. That's that's one of the major things that you um that uh, that the benefit shows the trust, provides. man. Yeah, and yeah. another reason too, yeah. guys, why I made that LLC out of Delaware was number one for the privacy to hold all those LLCs, and then the other reason too, guys, is I was able to open up a business credit card, right, where I charge all my real estate expenses on. Yeah, and that real estate that real estate card, right, and just so you guys, it's it's an Amex Gold that I use, um, because I have an Amex Platinum that I use for Fresh and Fit, and then I have an Amex Gold that I use for the real estate stuff. Everything for my real estate expenses gets charged on that gold, and then at the end of the year, I just give Steve the the um the um 
the uh, credit card statement, the year, the yearly statement that shows all the expenses for the entire year. And I gave him the fresh and fit one that shows all the expenses for the entire year and is able to go ahead and do what he needs to do from the tax standpoint, because all the expenses are there. That's why I tell you all credit card is so important. You get free points. You're able to track everything and you increase your credit score. Like there's no reason to use your own money, guys, when you have a business. So it, it, it allows me to. Go ahead and absorb those fees and, and get a benefit. He avoids all the paperwork receipts you have to keep for yeah. every, every transaction. Just give him his one list of uh, charges from his uh, credit card. Correct. He's good to go. You know, for you guys out there too, um, also to help out your CPA. So when you develop a relationship, you got a business, whether it's a rental property, you're going to have, you know, for each one of those that we talked about, we were talking about with Roger, mm -hmm. each one of those uh, LLCs for each property has to have their own separate bank account. So yes. when you do an yeah. LLC, yes. okay. So the next step is like you you get online you go to you go to your uh, to your to your department of state get your LLC. Next thing you do when they get to approve is get an EIN number. And this is what I'm gonna this is I'm gonna have a book and then we'll talk about this as the end. I'm gonna give it out for free for the viewers here only. Nice only only for the fresh and fit. So if you go onto my um, Instagram Instagram and DM me and just DM me fresh and fit, I'll give you both. There's two books, both copies. One is gonna be. For W two wage earners, are going to be like like things that you could do to get your tax bill down, and also if you want to start your own business, and then I'll walk you through some of the forms that you need to go through in specific detail and how to fill those out. That's free, and it's and the free. Other one, yeah, and the other one is um, for real estate people just starting out. How to go through that process? Talk. I talk about the cost segregation process. I have I have links in there and resources in there. That's about a fifty page book. Um, w Steve man in the chat. Yeah. W Steve in the chat. Free books. Yeah, so and it's right there on the guys. screen. Yeah. Yeah. at yeah. the bottom, guys. So I'm gonna give that out to you guys. Yeah, um, yeah it took me a free. while. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, and 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 I got a little. I had I had um, you know, obviously a major major life changing event happened to me last year, and that's kind of the purpose why I'm doing this. I'm uh, the intention of this channel that I was doing with it was I was starting this with my son around this time last year, and he was supposed to help me with this. We were supposed to launch this. And, uh, you know, he unfortunately passed away at the age of 22 and in, in honor of him and keeping his memory alive, yeah. his legacy alive. Um, that's why I'm doing this. So I'm just going to give the full alpha out. Uh, you know, I'm not trying, I'm not, this is, you know, I've, I've made my money. I have, you know, I'm running a successful business. Yeah. Um, this is something I want to do because it's important because he was struggling as a young man and he was obviously a fan of you guys. And, um, you know, a lot of the issues that you guys are dealing with, I understand, you know, because that was my son. And like, you, get, you guys see that every day. Yeah. yeah. So that's why I'm going to, that's why, that's the whole purpose and drive of this. That's what's going to drive me to, and motivate me to do this in, in honor, you know. And unfortunately, it got, we had a little setback with this, you know, for, for obvious reasons. But, um, yeah. But now, uh, I'm, yeah. So I'm, I'm here and I just want to put that out there. So there's going to be a lot, a lot of content out there. If you follow my channel, I'm going to get the YouTube channel, um, off the ground too as well and i'm going to be talking about these specific issues like we talked about you know, i have like you know i have so many clients that i can tap into um mm -hmm. that could be guests on the show that you would never hear of yeah. they're not they're not flexing out there with their lambo they're not I mean, these are multi multi-millionaires hey got, <laughs> well, to say, Steve. Got, yeah well you're young you know <laughs> that's good and i don't yeah billionaires I'm not, too yeah I, you got billionaire yeah, clients so something you know like you know i got a clip on my on my on my uh my Instagram, you know, it's, it's, it's a young lady. She's got a really great channel too. Um, she just talks like sometimes the best person to go to is a person that you don't, you don't know, you don't talk to and they're, they're around and they're willing to talk to you and they're willing to sit down. So I had clients of mine that wanted to start a alcohol, um, a mezcal. And I think I gave you guys a bottle like last year or so, and they wanted to start a mezcal, um, uh, company. So I put them together with, the, the inventor of Grey Goose Vodka, who's my client. You would Sheesh. never know him. We call him Vodka Bill. <laughs> Vodka Bill. He's in the 70s. You know, he sold that company for $2.2 billion to Bacardi. Wow. Back in 2012. Yeah. Um, I put him in touch. I put those guys, the two brothers in touch with those guys, and he mentored those guys. And today those guys are in, um, they're, they've got a, with Buffalo Wild Wings. Um, wow. They're, they're in Total Wine. They're in um, uh, all, like, major hotels. Um, and if it were not for them consulting with this guy and this guy just sat with them and he didn't charge them for this. He just sat with them and he mentored them and he messaged them, gave them links, um, and, and, and even put them together with people that he knew in the industry. And just basically the, you know, so that's kind of what I'm going to do. So I'm going to have, you know, I, I've got, I've got an electrician that's got a multi-billion, um, not multi-million dollar, um, business. He's an electrician, didn't go to college, um, got some great contracts. I got another guy that's uh, making over a million and he's a painter. Oh, never, wow. never went to college. Didn't go to trade school. 
Um, so these stories are out there and these are people that, you know, he likes cars, by the way, nice. uh, he's got a Ferrari. He's got, mm -hmm. he's got a couple of Ferrari. I think a Bentley. Okay. Yeah. You guys might have to talk. Um, but, uh, yeah, so that's kind of, that's what I'm going to, that's our whole purpose of this channel. So, um, go on there, DM me fresh and fit, and you're going to get those two books. I'm going to email you personally. Completely free. Yeah, and we can see right now his phone's blowing up from DMs. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Perfect. Perfect. Yeah, yeah. Y'all are messaging him right now. <laughs> you know, see, his story yeah. is inspiring. Yeah. yeah. And I hope one day you can tell the whole extent of the story because this is, once again, I don't know how you do this, but you're very inspirational to me at least and yeah. Myron as well. No, of course. I what mean, happened? You know, and, to um, lose your son, I mean, and still say, you know what, I'm yeah. going to do this because this was his dream. Because uh, make no bones about it, guys. Like, Steve doesn't need to do this whatsoever. Yeah. He's already been established. He owns his own accounting firm. He does very well financially. Doesn't need to do this. But he's doing it because it's like, hey, me and my son started this. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to start. I'm going to finish it. Yeah, yep. so it's my, it's my way of giving back and honoring his memory. And, uh, you know, like I said, um, I'm going to walk people through, you know, step by step the process of I'll walk you through on the IRS website where what forms to print down, how to fill them out. Things like if you came to my office and sat when you had a personal consult, that's the level that you're going to get for free. That's the whole purpose. And I figured out like, let, let the ad sense on revenue, let them pay, pay for you, for your, for your fees and get the free knowledge out there, you know, and, and there's a reason why you guys are tuning into this. Cause you guys are the guys that are going to be top the, the, the 1%. Yeah. Um, yeah, the, you guys are actually watching the real content versus like just watching us argue with chicks. This is the stuff that's going to change your life. Is there anyone out there on YouTube with this much value? That no. I, there's no way. I, no, I, yeah. they're not going to explain S Corp and LLC because people tell you all the time, oh, yeah, I do an S Corp, but they don't tell you why. The details. And he's telling you specifically why. Literally, yeah. if you go ahead and just do an LLC versus switching it over to an S Corp, it goes into a pile that's more audited by the uh, IRS than a raise of flag is going to cause you problems. And like you said, from the very beginning, if you start right, you end right. Yeah. You start wrong, you end wrong. Yeah, and so, it can cause yeah. you dearly. Um, cool. So, I can so hit some of these chats. Yeah, because yeah. um, I know some of you guys probably have some really good questions. And hey we man, can put open your it phone up. on a mute, man. <laughs> oh, <laughs> <here> you. <laughs> <Just coming in>. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, guys, and the book is completely free, man. Yeah, go support um, Steve. Various layers. Have a great day, gentlemen. I appreciate you guys and all you do. CEO Network and Big Bossing. Thank Shout you so to much. Cody. Guys, get your questions in now, man. Yeah. Um, Juvie goes, I'm 18, just graduated with two jobs and a 694 credit score and just finance the car to get credit history and have a credit card that I use instead of cash, make it 50K plus a year. Any advice? Um, you're doing good. Just doing make good. more money and pay pay off. Um, I mean, I don't know about buying a car right now. And but they can, Okay, so the finance car is not uh, the best thing, but if you can pay it off in a reasonable amount of time, let's say a year or a year and a half, you could pay it off, then it's good. It but if it's be, too long, make it 50K a year. Yeah. If it's too long, just then it's, it focus is on making more money, bro. If you got to go yeah. and just get another job, just do yeah. that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, just pay your bills on time and get that credit score above a 720. Because that I, should be your goal. When I was younger, yeah. what I did was I got a car I could pay off in a year. Like I had a cash for it in my hand anyway. Mm -hmm. So I just paid it off over time, pulled up my score, and that helped a lot. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. if you can't pay it off, pay it off. But yeah, man, focus on getting, I would say for you, just focus on getting your credit score over also, a 720. Also, guys, right now, there's, um, I would I would hold off if you can on getting a car right now because I think the car market right now, you should know. You yeah. probably know better than yeah. I do. Yeah. Car market's going to get soft. Over the next six months, oh. I'm seeing a lot of repos too. Yes. So I've got, I've got an in, I got a lot of car dealers that I, I work with and they, and I'm, I, I got I, like, I got them on online and I always ask them. I always talk to my real estate agents. I always talk to my car dealer guys, cause those okay. are the big ticket items. Of and course. once they tell me as owners and operators of those businesses, if they're having issues, that tells me what's going on in the economy. And I've always used that oh. as a barometer. Car, cars is, is a big measuring thing. So he's telling me right now. They're having trouble right now. Um, you know, now the new, the new, I think the new car market is going to be the new thing because there's going to be, it's going to be competitive. Um, and if you guys can hold off, there are going to be some better deals on there. We had so. on the show Lucky Lopez before, and you mentioned all the repo lots are packed to yeah. the brim. There's going to be a lot and have to of get stuff more space gonna... because people can't afford to pay the car. Notes. These floor plans right now, they can't pay that. They can't pay the note on that and hold wow. that. Yeah. So they got to get rid of this shit. So yeah. these are like um, the beginning the signs. De de dealership owners yeah. telling you this. Yeah. Wow, yeah, so yeah, he's yeah, getting yeah. straight from the source, guys. Yeah. So, and then what are the real estate guys telling you? Real estate, too, as well, right now. I mean, it's, you know, I just talked to Roger on the way here, mm -hmm. and he told me, he gave me a stat, and I wish I wish I, I, wish I would have wrote it down. But he, he's pretty he's pretty uh, optimistic on the on the, on the the rental market. Yeah. Um, Still good in Miami. He, you probably know this, too. Yeah. What's what's the, they need like four or five, like they're short. There's still many? a shortage, yeah. What's um, the, what is it, like four or five million yeah, home units? Yeah, we're, we're about short four or five million uh, single-family homes in the United States. Okay. Yeah. So, I mean, I guess that boasts well for the – you know, the only problem is the rates right now and affordability. So, I guess – Yeah. 
some of these people might have bought. The rates their, are kind yeah. of in the cash flow pretty bad yeah. right now. Kind of the situation where you're probably making a deal. Maybe they got a two or three percent. Yep. And then now it's at eight. Yep. So they can't get that. I was easily price. getting like 10% cash on cash returns with deals that I was doing in yeah. Miami. Now I got to settle. If I'm going to do a deal in Miami, it's going to have to be seven to 8%, which is a lot lower than I normally like to do. Um, but you know, the Miami market's good. So it's like, I would make that concession because the appreciation is strong. The rental market is strong here. People are moving here. So the growth is, is on the horizon, but yeah, any other market, I wouldn't take an 8% cash on cash return. Yeah, absolutely. But uh, in Miami, I could. But yeah, but the interest rates have definitely hurt it because interest rates keep going up. Right. They're trying to stave right. off the inflation. It's the same you know? thing with the cars. Now, a lot of these people, they got, you know, 9, 10, 11% low uh, rates on their oh, cars. Wow. You know, they're paying, you know, for not so, you know, because they bought these cars where there was a shortage. And now, you know, it, they're having a tough time making the payments on them. So there's a lot of So repos. right now is not the best time to get a car. I would wait to see because there's going to be some good deals. I think towards the later, the later part of this year and early next year. Okay. Yeah. Unless you're going it's to get funny. a fantastic deal, guys. They're struggling to, let, to sell cars nowadays, especially okay. like those because it was high in the market and then it's dropping because people they can't sell cars, so they have yeah. to at some point, you know, give you a deal on it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So you know, they're they're lost your gain. So um, yeah. it's timing's everything. Yep. All right. Uh, we got here. Him Holland goes. If you guys had an insurance company, what would be the niche? Auto, life, etc. Hmm. You had an insurance company. I'm not gonna lie, bro. What would be the auto, auto for me? Auto? Just because. What, what do you think, Steve? I would say auto. Yeah, auto. <laughs> yeah, because yeah. bro, because they're paying them a have accident. <laughs> so although they're charging a lot of high rates here in Florida because of the last, you know, EN and stuff. Yeah, like yeah. Property. Uh, Troy W. Fed React stream last night. Couldn't stop talking about it at work today. Thank you so much, Troy. Nice. Appreciate that, man. I'm I'm glad y'all enjoyed that uh, sound of freedom breakdown. That was fucking. Good. Uh, Yuri, man, good things. Yeah, they rescued kids from Haiti and everything, man. And guys, go watch that episode, man. Um, good things come to those who wait, but the best things come to those who take action. And me, shout out to you, Yuri. That's a good quote, uh, man. Mr. Al goes, "Hey, Myron, you said you will try to get Dr. Stephen Greer on. How is that going? It'd be nice to have him on the show. Uh, working on it. Um, for some of you guys that are wondering, probably wondering who is that? That's the leading um guy when it comes to UFOs." Um, definitely going to try to bring oh, him on. Wow. Um, and then we got uh, Tony goes, what does Steve say is a better route for trading profits, LLC or S Corp about to open a business bank account to deposit profits and pay myself bi-weekly? Okay, trading hmm. profits. So if you're an LLC and you become S Corp, you cannot pay yourself a salary. That's Ooh. another little caveat. So you Ooh. have to be an S Corp. Okay. Be an S Corp, yeah. So yeah. This, Tony S Corp, my friend. Bam. <laughs> I think that's a safe bet. Yeah. For most people. So even owners. as a trader, because because the people might do that where they trade commodity stocks, whatever, incorporate themselves as an S-Corp, I guess, huh? I would do that yeah, as an yeah. S-Corp. Yeah. And that's another thing, because I've seen like day traders do that, that schedule. Uh -huh. And you do so much trading that your top line is like, it could be like a couple of million dollars because it's in and out. You're trying to do, you know, oh. these, these you know, short trades during a short period of time. So these 1099s come out they're they're like when you look at the 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 sales and the and the purchases they're huge numbers gotcha you don't want to put that on your 1040 it's just yeah. a big red flag okay it's problems fair enough so if you're doing the trading on the side and you got a regular job especially definitely switch over to us yeah. <laughs> um uh, marius pagel goes uh, or pagel starting an online mindset coaching business soon would an llc be beneficial right off the bat can i use traveling or for or home rental expenses as write-offs florida is my home state so that's a great thing too. So that's another thing I'm going to do for you. Like first, what do you guys do? Um, yeah. So definitely LLC, but you want to be an S corp. Yeah. You want to be an S corp because that's not a, that's it's just, if it's not a rental property, become an LLC, but make it an S corp. Yeah. If it's a rental property, just stay an LLC. Is there a way for them to make it an S corp off the rip or do they have to open it up as an LLC? Yeah, just you for can. Ease? Yeah, you could do. So, you know, the only thing is just like, okay, I'm going to, you know, open up like my ABC Inc. INC. Mm -hmm. You just don't use LLC. Yeah, you you you, you could just do a profit. But why you just get the best of both worlds? You could get the limited liability uh -huh. plus the S corp status. So you okay. get you get you get in the best. So of it's both like a worlds, hybrid. Yeah. It's not a full S corp. When you have it's LLC a full first. S corp. It's treated for tax purposes. Mm -hmm. So why not get the best? The lawyers came up with the LLC. Mm -hmm. So use what they came up with, and the IRS is giving you the option to treat it as an S corp. So to get both. Got okay, it. so yeah, start both. off as an LLC yeah. so that you can go ahead and get yeah. both both, so yeah. both sides. But if you just open it as an S corp, you're not able to get the benefits of an LLC. Correct. Because now it, you're just treated as a straight corporation S corp. Got okay. it. So you don't have limited liability. Oh, that's okay. smart. Okay. I mean, All there right. is some corporate protection there. You know, that's more, more from from a legal standpoint. But um, uh, I I just I like the LLC. Better. So start with LLC. Then make it S corp. Yeah, a few cool. months in, yeah. but yeah. do it within a year, right? Yeah. There's also been things where I've I've had like if it's a limited liability where you're 
account can't get like your bank account. Mm. Um, I think there's something that has to do with your bank account can't um, get like garnished uh if you're set up as a limited liability where if it's set up as just a corporation they could go in there and get it though i think okay. that that's one of the things too that i learned along the way that's only i came across it a couple of times in what about child support well child, child support they're gonna get it anyway it damn yeah, 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 oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh so yeah llc beneficial off the bat then switch over my friend and then um he said can i use traveling or home rental expenses go back to that one last one um He's asking, can I use uh, traveling or home rental expenses as write-offs? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So that's the thing. Yeah. So I'm, I'm going to be doing like a special uh, thing for like content creators where they're maybe, you know, d d running it out of their house. Yeah. So Kinda that's like going to be a special <laughs> segment that I'm going to, I'm going to focus on too. And they could write up, they could write off up to a certain percentage, right? Per yeah. You, you take a percentage of, you know, the square footage and then you could write off a percentage of your utilities, your uh, interest, your you know, your insurance, so on and so forth. Rent, like whatever you're paying for that house, yeah. Gotcha. Cool. Um, cool. Uh, Double Ace goes, LLC, that's 50-50 partnership with my brother and our and I, our business gross is about 250K a year. We file taxes as S-Corp and our company pays us W-2s as employees. We don't have any other employees besides us two. Is this a solid structure for better tax purposes? Yeah, it's perfect. Yeah, it's Damn. perfect. Cool. 50 50. All right, sweet. Good stuff, Albo. You're doing it right. Uh, the one Curiso, five bucks, appreciate that. Um, member, uh, Lord Titus, I have a videography business, been filing as a sole proprietor, uh, proprietorship for the past few years. Would an LLC be beneficial? Ooh. Yes. Get rid of that Hell ASAP. Yeah. That's an L. And, and become an S-Corp. Yeah. LLC. LLC. Oh, what is a sole proprietor? Well, is, that's not, what, what is that's another? Sole proprietor Schedule C. Yeah. That's Schedule C. That's you, what happens. You become a sole proprietor when you don't elect to be treated as a, as a, uh, as a, an LLC, or if you just do a business and you don't form a corporation, then oh. you just default to a sole proprietor isn't that oh. tax more yeah so that yeah. now you're subject to the 15.3 percent I, oh, I, I just knew one thing don't be a sole, sole, sole proprietor whatever it is yeah okay don't so yeah bro um yeah. you need to switch so what should he do in in his case should so he go yeah. make an llc immediately yeah go make an llc get a tax id number and then fill out these two i don't know if you just write this down you got to fill out and you can get this on my book too because i talk about the two forms and i give the links in there and write I, this down yeah. So if you go in there and you DM me and you DM me fresh and fit in that book, you're going to have, I'm going to show you, walk you through the steps, where to start, what to do next, how to fill out that form. And then I'm going to be uploading some videos on there because you're going to have questions on how do I fill out this, this 8832 form? What box That's the do form I need for an to LLC? Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to have two, two, those two forms. They have some tricky questions on there and you have to fill them out in a specific way to make sure you don't F them up. So I'm going to give the two videos on there that's going to be coming in the next couple of weeks, whatever, and then that'll show you exactly what boxes to check, why to check those boxes, the stuff that we do, the stuff that I do every day. Real I'm just quick. going to give it away for free. So do they have to, let's say he's in the state of Florida for simple purposes. He needs to make the LLC in Florida. Once he gets that EIN number, right, for making the LLC in Florida, yeah. then he goes and does this tax, uh, this, uh, sorry, this IRS form 8832. 8832 and then 2553. Boom. Write those that down, guys. So if you, if you want to start your LLC, Go to your state, um, state department website, whatever it may be, which is, you know, for businesses, right? In Florida, I think it's yeah. SunBiz, Sun right? Yeah. In other states, it's called the Department of uh, State for yeah, businesses, every whatever. Got, yeah, every state has state. its own thing. But either way, you go ahead, create that LLC in your state, wherever you live. Once it's incorporated, you get an EIN number from the IRS. Then once you have that EIN number, which is basically, think of it as a social security number for, for your business. business. Correct. Yeah. You take that EIN number and you're going to go ahead and put it in your IRS form um, 8832. And then the other one is 11... 2553. 11, 2553? No, 2553. 25, yeah. And then those two forms are going to help them set up as a that'll, LLC? That'll turn them into... That'll turn the LLC into an S-Corp. Okay. okay. And then, you, boom, you're done. Okay. Yeah, then you just go walk down in, to the bank. In his case, does he need to account. do anything else since he's not even an LLC? He's got to create that LLC. He's got to start right from the scratch, yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah, so... Uh, I just had an idea, bro. You should start a Patreon. And do videos about... All this stuff behind the scenes. We talked to me about it because I, you know, see, I, I bring the knowledge and the experience to her. I don't bring what you guys have. You guys are the new generation where that's where I was bringing my son in because he knows how to do all this stuff. You know, I, I grew up, you know, I didn't have a cell phone. We didn't have the internet, <laughs> yeah. You know, different times. Um, so, so that's, you know, where, yeah. So we'll you do guys, a, we'll yeah. do a value exchange. You help, okay. You speak to my network and I'll have you tips on uh, Patreon. There you go. There Networking, you go. baby. Yeah. 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 Let's yeah. do it. Amen. Uh, Cesar Aguilar. Hey, Myron and Steve, would it be smart to start a car wrapping side hustle as an LC stack up a good amount of capital for rental property, then later into more real estate? 
That's so, a great plan. Yeah. Yeah. It's a great yeah. plan, but for us is this be, the same guy that yeah, wanted the I car think wrapping? So. Yeah. I think so. But again, you got to make sure it makes sense because car wrapping is a want to say one of those niches where like guys have to be into cars. You need to know your marketplace at the very beginning. For example, who's going to be your customers? Can you get customers at all? So mm-hmm. before you run into that business, make sure your customers lined up before you even jump into, uh, yeah. into it. And, and guys, keep in mind, I didn't start my real estate LLC until I had 10 plus properties. So yeah. it's not like you have to go ahead and incorporate all your LLCs, sorry, all your real estate properties into LLCs immediately. I bought all the properties under my personal name and then I switched them to LLCs after. And the reason it's for easier. That, I, it's easier to buy under your, yeah, yeah, little tip for y'all real fast. <laughs> it's way easier to buy a property under your personal name and then yeah. switch it to an LLC after because if you try to buy it under your LLC name, um, it's going to be, they're going to get, you're going to get shittier rates. Yeah. It's going to, it's, you're not going to get as good of deals with lenders and it's just a pain. What's the form again? Quick claim deed. Oh yeah. Quick claim deed. Yeah. yeah. We okay. talked about you know that. Yeah. See, yeah. You know what? Yeah. Steve, let's one. talk yeah. about this real fast yeah. for the people. So, um, so they go ahead, they buy the real estate property under their personal name and then yeah. they want to switch it over to an LLC. What do they need to do? So the first thing when I, what I used to do when I, when I did it was, um, I'd buy in, you know, uh, Steve Cologne and a signee. Okay. And assignee. So that left me the out. Now I think in the state of Florida, they have a box where you could do an assignee. I think I talked to Rogers about that when you guys were doing that deal. Um, so then you go and do the deal because everything's going to be done with your personal credit. Yeah. It's going to be your your social security number. And the yeah. bank wants, you know, you don't want to complicate the whole deal. Who's this LLC? Are they, yeah. you know, and, and all That's this. That's why I'm even bothered. I remember having those issues. And, you know, sometimes you get some people that are just, you know, they're in, they're in the, 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 the lending department. Yeah. They get you know. finicky, man. Yeah, Underwriters goes, start goes freaking underwriting out. and they ask stupid questions and they're, you know, it's just, it's a pain in the ass. So keep it simple. And then when you go to the attorney or the title company to do your closing, they say, Hey, by the way, uh, an assignee, put it in whatever this LLC is, and then they'll make it happen with the paperwork. Hmm. Um, but yeah, so that's, uh, yeah, that's, and you transition yeah. it over. Yeah. Smooth. But you know, I have a lot of people too, and they were talking about like, you know, don't try to create this whole structure. Like, don't put the cart before the horse. Yeah. Like what we did with you, you're talking about like, now you're getting to a level where you're accumulating certain things. Now you, the next thing for you to think about is a trust. Yeah. A revocable living trust. Yeah. Right. So um, you build it organically. So as you go and you need certain things, you know, if you have a business, don't try to like strut. You know, I had a couple of clients come in and they're like, oh, we went to this tax seminar and this and that. And they had built a trust and they built like this holding company. They built these multiple. I'm like. Where's you don't have you don't even have a business and property yeah. yet. They had <laughs> yeah, the whole structure doing? in place. And they spent like thousands of dollars doing yeah. it. I was like, and they got mad at me. I'm like, well, you don't have to do all this. Like, well, yeah. you know, well, you don't teach this stuff. I'm like, no, you just this stuff you do organically as you acquire a new business or a new property. There's levels to new, it. Yeah. yeah. You just do it organically. And then they're, they're and then we pretty build forgiving. Yeah. I've noticed yeah. for entrepreneurs, like for you to like incorporate the stuff after the fact. Like, I mean, hell, I didn't I had tell plus properties before I even started. I mean, I just started doing the LLCing and you know the shell the shell company all that stuff I started doing that like this year guys yeah you know what I mean so and I've been acquiring property for the past year and a half two years so you, you could take your time with it just make sure you you get it set up right as soon as you can yeah. right like there there was one guy and I'm not gonna put the name out there because I've been doing some research on this stuff there was one guy he's it's funny and he's like he had this reel out there talking about um getting a trust and putting life insurance in it and getting life insurance like it had this whole oh, like, the scheme. I, don't know. I, I, I know what you mean, I but I won't like, say his name. First off, <laughs> you don't like who, no, nobody's like. Then he's like, he's got this whole like. The, it's just like a lot of these streamers out there is like. But oh, you know what's like, scary? Yeah. There's no alternative. So it, it's either him or the other guy. Yeah, it's like so, like, like it's just unreasonable stuff. So see, they it, need you, bro. They need okay. you, man. <laughs> okay. This um, is unreasonable. <laughs> All right. So we got here. Who's up next? Uh, as independent contractor and roofing, should I open LLC as a consultant? How should I structure a business doing roofing? So again, um, LLC convert to convert to uh, an S corp, and um, yeah, independent contractor. Um, ooh, roofing. Your your workers comp rates are going to be high. I don't know what state you're in, but I know in the state of Florida, you can do a workers comp exemption if it's just you and a, and two other people that have ten percent ownership. Hmm. Um, and you could save on the workers comp rate because those rates are high. They're like thirty something, thirty you know, for every dollar that you. So if you're if you're a small roofing company, it's just you, maybe a couple of guys. You can you can structure yourself. Where you don't have to pay that that extra rate. Is so. it because of the uh, liability of them hurting yeah, themselves? Yeah, they fall off. It's yeah, it's huge. The workers comp. These guys are. It's very dangerous. Damn. Okay. Um, Menline goes. Can you pay for business services overseas via crypto and claim it as a loss? Got workers in Chile. Not a fan of fifty dollar wire fee. Shout out FNF. No, that's yeah. That's, I think you're trying to be smart. Whatever the it. jurisdiction is in <laughs> Chile, you're gonna have to you have to 
be under their jurisdiction for tax purposes. Gotcha. Crypto, man. Alman Howard, how much annual earnings do you need to make before hiring a financial consultant or accountant? Good question. So, I mean, I say if you're, you know, if you have a side gig and you're netting like forty to fifty thousand dollars profit, you know, you should already have, you know, started to think about getting a getting a CPA firm to help you out. Okay. Yeah. Um, mean green eight one six. Yep. Goes. How do you find a good CPA in your city, and how much should I be paying for them? Good question. Very good one. So depending on the industry you're in, I would ask around other people, like you know, whatever it is that you're doing. There's got to be other people that you know in that circle. They ask them who they use, and typically, you know, they say, are you happy with that guy? So usually, it's a re referral. Yeah. So someone that's doing yeah. well in life, that's uh, obviously well spoken for, has a good business. I'm just curious, brother, who's your CPA? And you ask them, yeah. and then they can help you out normally. Yeah, because if you have a specialized industry, I don't know what what kind of work that you're doing, but yeah. typically if it's a specialized industry, you want to talk to people in that industry and say, hey, who do you use? And uh, they'll, typically they'll refer you to somebody if they're happy with them. Yeah. Real quick, guys, do me a favor. We got 3,000 of y'all watching over on YouTube and then another 3,000 or so on Rumble. Can you guys do me a favor and open up a tab on YouTube and come over and like the video on YouTube? Because as you guys know, we're in YouTube jail for about two weeks, so it's going to suppress us in the algo a bit um, <laughs> since we're breaking out now. Um, so it would really uh, help with the algo if you guys went ahead and liked the video. Comment below you know, for the algorithm or something like that. It helps us a lot. Um, but yeah, guys, just like the video, let's get 100% engagement because we're giving y'all a lot Actually, of sauce right now. This is life changing information. If you want to help us, like the video and put hashtag question fit under the comments, yeah, on, on YouTube yeah. so that we can get back up and y'all go. And then also open up a tab on YouTube and on Rumble, watch us on both, man. So, um, like yeah, the viewership is literally split right down the middle. The half of y'all are on Rumble, half of y'all are on YouTube. So just wow. like it on YouTube for the algo. If you don't mind from the free sauce, like the video, and put hashtag in the comments, fresh and fit. Yeah, man, please. We so, would really appreciate that, yeah. guys, especially since we're just coming out of YouTube, Joe, and giving y'all the sauce, man. Who else is giving y'all this kind of information? I mean, the S Corp and LLC, um, talk alone. The bread chain alone is like literally that's going to save you thousands upon thousands of dollars, guys. And guess what? In school, you don't learn this shit. They don't teach you that at all. No. I didn't even know it. No. Like, until and then, Steve saved me. If you do find out, it might be too late. Yeah. So, um, H and R Block ain't gonna do this for y'all. No, they will tell you that. They'll, 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 they'll take your money. Though. I paid less taxes. Uh, I paid more taxes with H and R Block than I did with Steve, making ten x the money with Steve. I mean, yeah. I said out of jail. There was his snipes. Crazy. Because of uh. <laughs> uh <laughs> okay, we got here. I'm a single business owner. I have an ATM business. Is it appropriate to have an LLC with ATM since it's passive income? Good question. Really good question. So that's it. Yeah. So it's uh, ATM business. I, I can explain because I have okay. one of these ATMs too. Basically, mm -hmm. it's ATM. You put it at a location um, and uh, it makes it just it basically generates passive income for you. Should so it's they... kind of like a rental property. Uh, yeah, really. Yeah. It so is. I guess. Yeah. So I guess you Keep don't it have it under to, an yeah. LLC. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's simpler too. Yeah. No and need for an S Corp on that. Not, yeah. It's not subject to self-employment tax. So yeah. Yeah. Cool. Um, and then crying Frankenstein like the... Um, like the picture, I think video is what he means. Like crying Frankenstein, I appreciate that. Yeah. And guys, don't worry on the ATM thing. I'm gonna give you guys an update probably in the next month or two, um, with the, the ATM together and how my crypto ATM is doing, and show you all the numbers. Uh, I I love to be transparent with you guys. Bra Bri Bra Bri eight three one goes. I have an appliance repair business looking to expand. What would you recommend currently a sole proprietor? Uh oh oh shit. I'm an appliance repair business. Yeah, do not be a sole proprietor. L yeah, LLC S corp. There you go. That was easy. No. So is there ever a situation where it's good to be a sole proprietor? Not, I can't think of one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah Unless not, you're not just right doing there. some like selling little t-shirts <laughs> or like, you know, some like BS job on the side of like know, a real stuff thing? that you don't really care about. And you're like, just like, yeah, a little, yeah. that's so an maybe. Bro. Yeah. But yeah. Guys, sole proprietorship. No. Selling Avon or something. Yo, <laughs> yeah. don't, don't do that, bro. Yeah. yeah. That's like what uh, <laughs> like a, a woman on the side, a woman could do like she sells cookies on the side yeah. or some shit. You know what I mean? Like yeah, that yeah, yeah. for you guys that are actually like earning real income. Like, nah, man. Um, Girl Scouts. Yeah. <laughs> this is only good for Asagini. U.S. law. Well, yeah. 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 I mean, yeah. We're, in US. we're in America, bro. Yeah. I, I mean, Canada, I mean, a lot of first world countries have similar setups, right? But yeah, in general. Talk to your local accountant over there. Yeah. Or uh, CPA. Dodge Roberts goes, is it worth getting an LLC when you day trade stocks and Forex to save on taxes? So day trading, again, I don't like that schedule because you're going to have to put it in your schedule. It's just, there's just high numbers that you're putting on your 1040 that just mm -hmm. track a lot of attention. Yeah. You know, it, it, it's, it, those are outlier returns and they, you know, they have certain algos where, and that's why when you have a business, you have to put a code for what type of business that you're in because what the irs does is they put those in a repository and they take all that data and then if any any one of those like expense line items falls outside of the ordinary uh, ordinary like uh, percentage of what it is for gross income 
in that particular industry, that's how they flag returns. Oh, wow. Yeah. So that's why you want a good CPA that knows certain industries. So they know like, look, you know, I know this industry, you can't, you know, and, and they're, and they're doing a good job comparing year over year and to make sure like there's no, these crazy. Can, can you even, he's saying when you day trade stocks and Forex to save on taxes, can you even trade stocks or Forex and save on taxes? Well, I mean, if you're having gains, I mean, I would imagine that you want to do it for profit and make money, not yeah. to take losses, you know, unless you're harvesting them at the end of the year, but in which case you have the wash sales and that's a whole nother. Is know, there, story. is there a way to like, like mitigate tax liability through, through trading stocks though? I didn't think that there was a way to do that. I mean, I think if you're trading, you're trying to make a profit and make money. So which therefore you would I don't not understand that. The, yeah. The, the we got to ask my dog, yeah, how, how are you going to save taxes, yeah. bro? Unless unless you're dog, uh, Lambo Raul. With Forex and day, trade. Maybe I, there's a way, maybe. What people used to do at the Maybe end of losses. the year, yeah. What people used you, to they do, they have the to end. have report losses, though, right, to get those tax can, benefits, right? But you have to harvest those like at the end of the year, you harvest them. But then what happens if you buy that stock back within thirty days, then you can't take that loss. So, oh. we, you know, so a lot of times we will look at portfolio. I'll have my clients come in and we'll look at things that we could do. And one of them is we look at what stocks they have and their if their dogs, they've had them a long time and they're going to lose money on them. Yeah. Then I say, all right, you need you know sell those at the end of the year. And, you know, we're not trying to buy them back or whatever, um, because what people used to do was sell them at the end of the year mm -hmm. and then buy them right back in January. Oh, you know, but, you, but that you can't do that. And then they take the loss you know, that, that that's called wash sale. So but you can't buy it back within 30 days. Oh, so um, so they used to do that as, you know, the IRS said, no, 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 we can't do that anymore. But yes, yeah, so a lot of times I'll tell them, like, OK, maybe just get rid of this. Thing. It's, it's either going to come back. You know, it's a dad. So it's a very, Just it seems to me like it's on, a yeah. very, to, to get tax benefits from trading stocks or forks is a very nuanced and case by case basis that requires specific tactics and strategies to the only thing to i it. could think of is if you're gonna if he's got certain things that he doesn't think are gonna come back and just wants to get rid of them then um people are just trying to get around yeah. buying real estate bro buy real estate guys if you want tax liability uh, you know what's cool though, man god but, damn but with crypto yeah with crypto you can actually you're not subject to the wash sale Mm. So ah, certain crypto, so yeah. You, so you know, so we talked about it in the tax court with Charlie and Miguel. You can we'll, we'll tell them harvest, you know, harvest losses at the end of the year. If you got some crypto stuff that you know, so we, the market's been down. Um, so harvest these at the end of the year, and then you know, so you don't lose on it. Buy them right back. Mm. So you could you could do it like 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 a twelve thirty one. Take the loss for it on your return, and then buy it back. Uh, I think the IRS is going to close the loop on that eventually. Yeah, but right um, now you can take yeah, advantage. But of that's it. that's a little that's a little w. advantage. Yeah, bro, not we're a, giving y'all so alpha. much sauce right now, Legal, man. Legally, legally, of course. Yo, man, but yeah, dude. I mean, it, so yeah, so escort for this guy as well, right? Yes. Yeah, escort, yes. bro. Um, we got here uh, Chayamba Liro. Liro. First super chat. What if you're an international Amazon wholesale business owner, LLC in the U.S.? I'm outside of the U.S. though, and you start with an LLC. Should you move to an S corp? I don't work in the United States. Yeah, definitely. That doesn't that doesn't matter. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, you got to switch to an uh, to uh, an S bro because there's a bunch of guys that do that. That like go to like a lot of guys like they'll start an online business and they'll move somewhere significantly cheaper to live. Yeah. Um. But the, what is it? How much is it up to a hundred? If you make over a hundred and five thousand dollars or something like that internationally, right. that you that you have to pay taxes on. Well, see, the U.S. Um, is the only country in the world that taxes you on your worldwide income. Go figure oh, out. Oh, yeah. Yeah, of course, Uncle Sam's got to get his money. Yeah. So that's why, like, I was just in Puerto Rico. As a matter of yeah. fact, you guys are famous in Puerto Rico. I never <laughs> had this happen. But shout out to to uh, Gene Paul at the cigar bar. So the place I stood at uh -huh. was a was a um, above there was an Airbnb but above the cigar bar. Yeah, really nice cigar bar. And uh, this nice young kid, and he's a huge fan of you guys. And then all of a sudden, he called his brother, his cousin, his best friend there. And the next day, I was there. They're all like, they were all there talking about you guys. That's dope. And man. I was like, yeah, I, I know, yeah, I know these guys because I don't. The conversation just all of a sudden came up, and and uh, he started talking about it. I said, hey, every, you should follow these guys. And he's, like, I know these guys. <laughs> so, it's either, so shout out to Gene Paul. It's either a good Rico. response or a Great. bad response. Well, with fresh fit. even the owner, I think yeah. the owner, the, the couple of the owners, whatever they they like know you guys. So they said like, hey, if you guys ever want to come to Puerto Rico, you could do a you could do like, it's a really a nice cigar bar. Yeah, right in Old San Juan. It's beautiful. Okay. Um, right next, right next to the four, and uh, it's I've been there before. Uh, it's nice, but it's I'm a lot of fun. Yeah. I don't know if I would live there though. Yeah, that's the thing. You know, there's certain areas that, and I, that, that's what I'm doing. I'm gonna set up. I'm gonna. I'm setting up a business there. That's, okay. That's, that's my whole purpose there, and um, but if I set something up there, I'm gonna, I, you know, have to buy a property within two years. So, hmm. yeah. So just, uh, yeah, I just want to throw that in there. It's great, great tax. You know, there's a lot of crypto, uh, you know, guys out there. there. Yeah. yeah. Like yeah. the whole condado the area is like all bought up by crypto millionaires. Oh, wow. It is really mm -hmm. nice. It's right on the beach. It's really, you know, a lot. The food there, the restaurants are phenomenal. Isn't that where Logan Paul lives? Yeah. I think he has a crib Yeah, out he's there. in Dorado, 
which is which, that's another really very exclusive. Yeah, he needs area. some help, man. Huh? Yo, Sif, <laughs> hashtag Sif Logan. <laughs> yeah, right. He married a, a you, girl that's been passed around Hollywood. If you know, you know. Or he's marrying her. Um, <laughs> okay. Big, uh, getting you, uh, Big Bear, man. Uh, can I do my uh, do a LLC for my e-com business? I just started this year. P.S. Chris should just go bald. Uh, that five head isn't doing him justice. Uh, WMO. Can I do LLC for my e-com business? Absolutely. I just started this year. Yep. Yeah. Any any service or goods business that you're doing, I would definitely do LLC and definitely do S Corp. Only when it's a rental real estate property will I just stick to LLC. Got it. Gotcha. All right. Um, Richard, or the ATM thing where it's. It, I think the, the yeah, limit, if it's if it's passive, passive income, income and you're yeah, not active, it's passive income. You're not actively operating a business or yeah. an operational business where you're providing goods and services. Passive income does it get taxed the same as earned income? Ordinary income. So earned income is income that is subject to self-employment tax because you're actually earning it and working for it. Yeah. Right? So then there's ordinary income. So that would be like business from business profits. Okay. Um, and then there's there's uh, earned income would be like earned wages, you know, working. So actually. earned income and ordinary income aren't the same? No. Okay. So, so earned incomes, that's why you have the Schedule C where it's like it's subject to um, self-employment tax. Um, and then you break it out. So then you take the portion of that you're going to pay yourself as earned wages, and that's going to be subject to self-employment tax. The other one is going to be just ordinary income tax that you would pay um, for, for the rest of the and profit. And passive income isn't subject to the same, I guess, tax scrutiny. Maybe that's my portrait. So the words. thing with passive income is, yes, it's still subject to the same ordinary income tax rate. Mm -hmm. The only difference is you are limited on the loss that you could take. Okay. So if it's passive, you could only take up to a three thousand dollar loss per year. So in other words, um, yeah. So if you have like you know gains, and 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 so basically you can't take more than than a certain amount. You're limited on the losses you could take because it's passive. Okay. So yeah. All right. Uh, we got here Taylor Richard getting a used car soon about nine thousand dollars. If I start an escort for my entertainment manager business, which I'll be my first client, but I'm in college to get the actual degree, can I write off that the car somehow? Yeah, so definitely you're gonna you're gonna go to your account. And you're gonna tell him you got the car. You're gonna give him the paperwork for it. And he's gonna list it for you. He's gonna ask you how much do you use it for your business? Oh, I use the eighty percent. He's gonna list it for eighty percent. You're gonna get depreciation, a nice depreciation deduction on it. I'll, I have a lot of my clients. And this is going to become a good one. Again, like we we're talking about, the market's going to be really good for cars. So if you have a business and you want to get a nice deduction, um, you know that's that's definitely a way to do it. So a lot of times that we have uh, the, we have my clients trading out cars and getting new ones towards the end of the year to get a nice big tax break. And uh, prompted from this question, is it better to lease that car under business or finance it under your business for the best tax benefits? You would say. I mean, it all depends on the rate. I would think right now, you know, because the lease is nice because you could you could take you know the lease the whole lease payment on it, but the depreciation depreciation right now is really good. Too. Excuse me, with bonus depreciation plus section one seventy nine, if it's over six thousand pounds. You can get you could take the whole price of the car or whatever percentage of it that you're using. I thought it was eighty percent now. It's eight. Yeah, they dropped down for for the for the um, bigger. Yeah, wait. They, yeah, because it's gonna now they that's gonna phase out too. So it's gonna now it was hundred last year, eighty this year. Then it's gonna go to sixty until it, every year is gonna drop twenty percent. So I'll take advantage of it. now. Eighty percent. Eighty percent is still pretty it's good. Still, it's still big, yeah, yeah. And that, that's very important. So if yeah. someone buys a car right now, Range right? Rover, a Range Rover, one of these cars that's over six thousand pounds, Rolls Royce for their business. Cullinan. Yeah. Right. Um, they're able to write off eighty percent of the uh, of the car's purchase price. Purchase price. And the other twenty. Now how much they put down? Which that's yeah. huge. So if it's worth two hundred thousand, they're able right. to write off one hundred sixty k in the first year. In the first year. Yeah. Wow. And then the then the rest of the twenty percent, then you'll just take that over the next four years after that. Yeah. Okay. So wow. It's okay. Still a good deduction. Yeah. 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 And, and I think that's where first talked about. Um, because a lot of people ask, oh, yo, I want to buy a car. I want to buy a car. The only way it really makes sense to buy a car and lease it nowadays is if you're a business owner. Right. Yeah, pretty much. Right. Like if you're going to buy it as a if, privately and you got a regular job, you're not really going to get much benefit from it. So if you're going to lease a car, guys, at least have a business or something because so that you can get some kind of benefit. Right. It doesn't cost you anyway, so might as well get benefits off of it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Zot yo, Jim? guys, I'm a new. For, uh, don't do it through fraud, though, guys. Yeah. Uh, Zot G, yo, guys, I am new to Fresh and Fit, and I must say, you guys have an amazing team. Shout out to the mod team and greetings from ne uh, Netherlands. Shout out to you, Shout bro. Shout out to the mods, man. Assalamu alaikum, Habibi. Um, then we got here asked, okay, I own LLC <laughs> filed as escort for taxes. Would you recommend I set up a private retirement account funded by my LLC to, to invest in real estate? So he says, I own LLC filed as an escort. Okay, would you recommend? Yeah, you could do a, um, a solo 401k. <laughs> 
a solo 401k. You could even set it up as a Roth too. You don't need like the immediate tax deduction for it. That'd be the best way to put your earnings Roth in there. IRA? Yeah, you can put up to $66,000 in one year. And if you do it as a Roth, I mean, you could get the tax deduction on it, but then you're going to have to pay the tax when you pull it out. Um, but the, I like the 401k because you could take loans against it. So you need access to that money. You don't have to wait until you're like, you know, you're a retirement something. age. Yeah. yeah. And um, so then you could take loans against it and then you could pay yourself back the interest as long as you, you know, set up the paperwork right. Um, but yeah, definitely. That's four hundred one solo 401k. You should look into that. Okay, cool. Uh, G goes, should I create a company if I earn money from YouTube? Yes. Yeah, yes. Absolutely, absolutely yep. bro. Um, I run a trucking business as a sole proprietor. Yo, mm. yeah. This one you gonna wear. This one is stupid. They started an LLC trading luxury watches. Should I switch this to an S corp and should I change my sole proprietorship business as well? Thank yes. you, F the goats. Yes. All of the above. Yeah. So for your sole proprietorship, turn that into an LLC, then an S corp, and then your LLC, then your trading luxury watches LLC that you have. You need to make that an S corp as well. Yeah. So you should be running two S corps if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Two different businesses. Yeah, bro. What are you doing, man? Come on. Uh, just a bit. It's just a question, Myron. Did these money Monday? things apply to Aussies I might not have been paying attention sorry um I mean this is the US tax code um but you know I think the Australian um uh, tax code is very similar to the yeah. US tax code all the first world countries are I yeah, I yeah. um Canada Canada yeah Tom Tom Wilwright um Robert Kiyosaki's um um accountant Conan. Uh, he wrote a book called Tax Free Wealth, and in that book, he also he put in the beginning that like all the first world countries have very similar tax codes. Yeah, they do. So you know, obviously, in the United States we're capitalistic, so we might get better tax benefits, etc., than some of y'all in these other countries. But it doesn't change the fact that you know you could definitely take advantage and uh, make money in your respective I mean, country. We, we definitely have the most sophisticated and yeah. most complex yeah. tax structure. Yeah, on purpose. Uh, just yeah, a question, Myron. Yeah. Do these Amen. money? Oh, sorry, read that one. Uh, we got here, and guys, from this point forward, we're already 20 and up. Yeah, 20 and um, up. Best way to find a mentor for your new business? So, deep, so, find I mean, there's, your like, you know, that's what I was, I was talking about. Like, I'm going to have guests on my show that are just guys that you don't know who they are. They're, they're quiet money and they're successful. And, they're, and these guys will give free advice to you that's, that's je their jobs. It's alpha. And they will sit with you and talk with you because they want that's, you know, you're basically feeding their ego. They like that. They're like, okay, let me help. You know, they'll help you out. If you're really yeah. serious about it, you just go, just walk in and say, Hey, listen, right, yeah, do yeah. cloud. these we'll be happy guys to help are <laughs> bored. Yeah. They yeah. made their money. They made their success. They're like, you know what, what do I do nowadays? And it's just like, if you are adamant about becoming better, they can see the driving you. They see the ambition. You know what? Well, Johnny, I got you, brother. I'm you gonna take, give you my knowledge. Yeah, if, for a young, free. if a young kid came to me and I said, "Hey, you know, I want to know what what it is that you do and how you do it, and like, how can I be successful at doing it?" I'll sit down and give him all my time, and tell him everything that he needs that he needs to know for yeah. free. If he's humble yeah. and willing to learn, listen. Yeah. Why not take him out to lunch? Yeah, yeah. lunch. Lunch is well, you know, sp sp spend twenty bucks. Hmm. Well, you know if you I mean? tell me that, I'm, I'm gonna say no. But yeah, but that's because you're famous, nigga. No, uh, oh. he could he could buy lunch for himself. Well, you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah. Take, you take offer. You offer. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Hey, let's yeah. connect. You know, I'll take you out to lunch. It's an offer. Yeah. Talk to rich guys. He'll, probably, he'll probably give you free advi free advice and pay the pay the bill. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Van Chazelle, ten bucks. Appreciate that. Uh, Ghost Raven, two two six. If I start an epoxy and pressure washing business in a small town, what should I know about moving my business to another state with a bigger market? M. So basically, yeah. So get with. Get with a, you should probably get with a CPA because they'll tell you everything you need to know, whether you have to register for sales tax, what type of business license you need. They know everything when it comes to starting the business and they don't charge a lot of money for it. It's not like a, they can do these corporations for you. Can so, they keep their business incorporated in their home state when they when Yeah, they, they can, but that's a pain in the ass though. If you're going to move the whole thing over, like then you got to go back and file over there. It's like, uh, okay. no, like I, I would just keep it all to that one state that you're in. Yeah. Okay. Keep it simple. Ghost Raven. If I start an epoxy and pre no, sorry, read that one. And guys, these are these came in after Mo or these are all early. Okay, these came in earlier, guys. So from this point forward, we're gonna only read twenty and up. But I will read the ones that came in before. Steve, I have a midterm rental arbitrage Airbnb business where I manage real estate, but I don't own it. LLC or S corp? LLC. That's an S corp. Okay, because it's an active business, right? Yeah. So that's, that's an example. That's more of, of an operation. It's a yeah. Mid, yeah that's okay. An operation. He's so smart. Service. Smart. So, um, so basically, because a lot of people do this, they don't own the property. They just simply get it leased out through Airbnb and they get a percentage and the, the owner doesn't do anything. So the owner is able to keep that as an LLC and passive income. You, on the other hand, since you're actively finding clients to rent the property, et cetera, and you're running it like a actual business, that's not considered passive income. So you need to escort, but the owner can LLC it. I think I got to change my dinner plans. 
<laughs> I got my reservation. Because well, I don't know what she's cooking over, but it smells delicious. <laughs> I've been smelling it. Yeah, just back cooking some. Uh, so what do we got here? I understand the real estate strategy, but if I'm starting a business in, let's say, Virginia, should I do an S corp in Delaware or do I do it in Virginia? Is there an advantage? Just yeah. Again, now you have. To, you know, I don't know what the filing requirement is in Delaware. Can you? Is there's a there's a return you got to file, right? Uh, yeah, you have to update it every year to keep it up. Um. Let's say, should I do an S corp in Delaware? Or well, I have the LLC out of Delaware. Remember, this is real estate, guys. But you have a, you have it's to have an S corp. So you have a resident agent that has to like put their information in for that. Yes. Yeah. Yes, I did and it. Then you pay a fee for that per year. Okay. Yeah. Um. So yeah. So but like, I have it as I an LLC, yeah. not as an S corp, because it's real estate. So and it's the parent company. Yeah. It's not your uh lower level. Okay, I understand real estate strategy, but if I'm starting a business in, let's say, Virginia, should I do an S corp in Delaware or do I do it in Virginia? I think in your I, case, I Will, if it's it an active Virginia. business, I would, it's an operational business. I would do it in the state that yeah. you're in. It's it's an yeah in Virginia. Yeah, do it in Virginia as an LLC, then switch it over to an S corp. But remember, my LLC out of Delaware is staying an LLC because it's a real estate business. That's why. Um. Okay. DL Saint. Uh, this is the oh, shout out to DL Saint, man. I really want to know a podcast. Shout out to him, man. <laughs> This is Mrs. Mongo, Men needed Mongo. to hear. Respect to Meyer Fresh, Chris, uh, uh, Meyer Fresh, Big Mo, and Chris. Shout out to Brother Steve. Keep leaning from the front, John. I appreciate that, Saint Man. You, bro. Trying to give people the sauce. Guys, go check out his YouTube channel, by the way. He does a podcast where he helps guys. Um, you know, lot, he has a lot of wisdom, a lot of uh, knowledge from awesome his guy. years on life. Mil military vet, been around the world. Definitely someone that you want to watch. Um, D House, 50 bucks. Need advice, 30 years old, 105K salary. I'm paying too much in taxes. I'm already maxing my company 401K match. So go DM me. On there, because I talk about W two wage earners just like you, and I give strategies in that one book. Um, it's called the the the, the lie about um, tech. The, the first book that I'm I'm gonna send to you. Go in there. It's gonna have strategies for W two. There's like ten strategies that you can you can apply immediately for W two earners yeah. to lower their tax liability. Yeah. Cool, cool. Um, can you give us like two or three of them? For the so audience? so I mean, obviously you can you can. You're maxing out your 401k, but you also can do a traditional um, or a Roth IRA. But the Roth's not going to give you immediate tax benefit. But the, what's nice about it is you can let your money grow tax free, and then when you pull it out, you get tax at the end. Yeah, gotcha. But if you want to save now, you could put a little more. You know, you could put up six thousand five hundred dollars uh, into there. Um, also, I don't know what type of work that you're doing, um, so you could look at different things where you might be able to take some advantage of some of the business employee expenses. I know in your case where you bought the, your own Glocks and so forth like that, it yeah. wasn't that, but in some industries where you have, you know, certain things that you can, uh, you can, you can, you can write off, but okay. yeah, go ahead and go in there. Yeah. There's, there's, you know, those will be the time that are going to apply um, in 90% of For the cases. W2. Yeah. Okay. So, you know, unfortunate when you're W2, it's, you're very limited. That's why I like starting say, a business. If you have an so option. Good. Yeah. You need to have an option to become a self or um, independent contractor. Always opt for that uh, option okay. because now you're, you got you got the whole tax code at your disposal. Bam, nice. All right, um, we got here Eric Campos, twenty bucks. Appreciate Shout that. Out to you, thank you, my friend. Uh, Vigor Anami by uh, goes uh, by Rod. Eric goes. Uh, Fresh Fit Money Clips will help pass out the books. Thanks, Steve, for supporting the page. Shout out to you, my friend. There you go. Um, what small business or side hustle would you recommend for guys in the military? Also, what do you guys think about uh, AI OnlyFans business. Um, well, here, number one, with the military, you're a government employee, so you need to go ahead and get outside employment paperwork approved first and foremost before you do anything. That's number one, so you don't get in trouble, right? And I'll tell you that as a former government employee. And then as far as like a side hustle, what's your skill set, bro? Uh, I mean, I'm hoping that since you're in the military, you have an MOS. Hopefully that MOS can help you out in the civilian world and go ahead and have a uh, a business tied to your MOS so that you're, that you're you know, skilled in. I mean, what do you think, Steve? I agree. Yeah. I mean, when, when it comes to the military, I'm going to defer that to you because, you know, as far as working with the government, but um, nah. I have no idea what the, what is the AI, AI only fans. Only fans? Yeah. I mean, well, that's uh, never going to get official by the military. I'll tell you that right now, you, bro. You, you try to push that up through your chain of command. That's never going to get approved. And then if you lie and you say, oh, no, it's just going to be a side hustle with AI. And then they find out after the fact that it's AI with only fans. Uh, you might have um, uh, Army CID knocking on your door. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Army CID, open up. You know what I mean? Because, you, bro, remember when you're a government employee, they you have to have a certain level of of integrity and um, uh, to 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 whatever you do outside of the government. So if you're doing OnlyFans, that's essentially pornography. They're gonna the government might look at it as pornography on the side. So, yeah. and I guarantee your chain of command won't approve that. That could jam you up in the future. Have you a part of a um 
of an inter internal investigation, administrative investigation by Army CID. All it takes is one person to hate and say, look at this guy. He's doing OnlyFans on the side with AI. He's doing pornography. And then, bam, next thing you know, you're getting a court martial and you're over. And here, the other thing, too, is with the uh, USM, uh, M, the uh, God damn it, um, the military courts, like you have less rights than as a private citizen when you're being charged criminally. When they're hitting you administratively in the military and you go through the military courts, bro, that jag is going to fuck you up. <laughs> wow. So these are things you got to keep in mind when you're in the military, guys. You don't have as much freedom as a private citizen to do certain things. So, yeah, bro, just be very careful. I mean, what do y'all think? I agree. Especially if you got a yeah, clearance. Absolutely. Especially if you got a clearance, they're going to come and they're going to they could revoke your clearance. Like, bro, you got to be very you got to move intelligently when you work for the government, especially when you got a, a secret, a top secret, etc. Clearance. SCI. Yeah. That stuff is all going to be unfavorable. And it all it takes is one person to snitch and hate on you and be like, oh, look at this guy doing this stuff. And then, bam, internal investigation open on you at Army CIDs at your door. Yeah, it sounds cool, but I went to or anyone, NCIS or whatever branch you're I went your to OSI. Anyone, anyone what you want to do with that. Yeah. Yeah, but it's going to have to go up the chain of command anyway. Your superior is going to know he does what yourself. he's doing. So, yeah, yeah. Don't, don't do the OnlyFans stuff, bro, if you're going to be in the military. That, that's my suggestion. Don't, don't do anything that could be looked at negatively. Um, I purchased my home last year this month. What benefits can I get by moving out and renting my current home to a family member? Can I start an LLC with that? Yeah, definitely start the LLC with it immediately if you're going to, if you're going to do that. Cool. Um, so you guys are getting so much sauce, man. This is like, bro, this is probably one of the most value-packed episodes we've done in a very long time. Shout out to Steve. Yeah, shout out to Steve. Hey, Fresh to Fit, I own a restaurant, but I made it as a sole proprietor. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Stupid. Yo, this is what the hell no, bro. What the hell no, bro. Just hold it, hold it, hold it. Hold it. Just hold it. It's fine. As, <laughs> as it's my first business and didn't have much help, I worked with what I got. How can I go about making it an LLC S-Corp? Is it even beneficial to do that with a restaurant? Most definitely with a restaurant. That's so much liability in there. It's incredible. Uh, yeah, do that like ASAP. But see, that's the problem. Plus the tax savings on it. It's like you're But here's the question. How long has he had the restaurant open? Yeah, well, yeah. So you're going to get to come up with a name. You're going to start from scratch. Okay. And you're going you're gonna to go sit down with your CPA. And, so if it's been under yeah. two years, he can probably still convert it to an escort, maybe. No, he's not even an LLC. He's just oh, a sole yeah. so provider. He's, oh, yeah. he's just operating the business under this his own name. Is the issue, though. We've been taught the wrong way to do business, yeah, facts. or not at all. Yeah, and we run into things like this, and it's like, wait, why did I'm not getting full benefits? Because yeah. we don't know. All yeah. he did Steve. was basically like you could do it here in Florida. You just go in there. All he has is a fictitious name, or, or like it's like a DBA, doing business right? as yeah, yeah, DBA. DBA. Yeah, and so, bro, whatever the name of the restaurant is, and it all, and he's putting that on a schedule. Damn, he get taxed like crazy. Yeah, he's probably playing employees, and oh, man, on, on the table cash. Yeah, bro. Yeah, yeah, dude. Yeah, 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 you, yeah. You need it. It's like he needs to do it like right now yeah. as he's watching the show. Like yesterday, make an LLC right now, bro. While you're watching us, <laughs> like live. yesterday, bro. Okay, hey, Seuss, come on. Yeah, he says make that LLC right now, hey, and then hey, you're gonna go ahead hey, and turn hey, that thing into an S He's legal, bro. You're legal. <laughs> get that, get that taco truck. Get the taco truck. Make an S car. Come on. Hey, yes, racist, bro. <laughs> I'm just kidding. It's okay, he's watering. Yeah, he, he, he's right. one of them. Uh, he's one. Of them. <laughs> Uh, super guts. super guts goes uh i have a couple of trustworthy friends and we would like to know how we can all go in on the umbrella s corp while owning separate properties that have equitable shares in the properties based on our ability to fund the accounts okay okay so their properties you don't know okay so again we're talking about properties so i have this in my business as well too in my cpa practice so you guys will probably be you know obviously an llc but then what happens is it's a multi-member LLC. Uh -huh. It's not a sole member LLC. It's a multi-member. So you guys will default to a partnership. And again, it's 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 uh, real estate rental activity. I'm assuming. Mm -hmm. So you can you can structure it that way. It'll be a separate return, but every uh, you'll have partners. Um, it'll default to a partnership tax return, not an S corp. Okay. Okay. Um. Hey guys, do me a quick favor. I'm looking right now. We got three thousand y'all watching on YouTube alone, but I see that we only have. 1.9k likes guys damn bro. i need y'all to stop what you're doing see that like button right below the video that little thumbs up i need you guys to smash that like button right now we should be at 100 percent engagement for this video because we are giving you guys so much sauce right now helping y'all we are literally saving y'all thousands of dollars right now as we speak and also the real supporters that support fresh and fit do me a favor Hashtag fresh and fit in the comments down below. That's all we ask for, bro. It's yeah. free. Literally comment it right now as you're watching, guys. Boom. That's it. Like the video, man, because we're giving you a lot of sauce. You guys have been requesting this episode for a long time, by the way, too. And now you got it. And you guys are getting for, it. And we're free. answering your questions. You guys have one of the best accountants. Hold Literally on. answer your questions right here, right now. Betty, yeah, Steve, for so, a regular appointment with a CPA to talk about these things. I was just going to say that. Okay. How much so, is the cost? 
So anywhere from three to five hundred dollars. I know. I know if I have a consult with someone that say, "Hey, what I got to pay?" It's typically anywhere from three to five hundred dollars. So this would be equivalent to me, you know, instead of doing a one-on-one -on -one with someone and giving like you know advice with, and telling them exactly what they need to do, mm -hmm. um, you're getting it for free. W. So, yeah, and it's, just like the video. Yeah, that's all you got to do. And and uh, DM him to get his free to two free books for y'all. Yeah, how to set up your yeah. LLC, switch it over to an S corp, and then how to um. 10 ways to mitigate your tax liability as a W-2 employee. Because a lot of you guys have regular jobs and you want to be able to go ahead and get some tax benefits and lower what you I pay. I could only imagine me 18 years old hearing this info, bro. Bro, I, I wish I had a curve, bro. Man. I'd be smarter. Man. You know, and and if you're going to be yeah. a, you know, you know, obviously. But guys, comment in the comment section. I see you guys putting yeah. the hashtag <laughs> no, no, fit. Not, not in the live chat. The comments. Put it in the comment section. Yeah. Put hashtag fresh and fit. Shout out to you guys, Just man. below. Click comments. Fresh and fit. Boom. Hashtag fresh and fit. Or right. for the algo. We appreciate it. Sorry, you had something fresh you were trying to say? No. Or Steve? Oh, so I, what I was going to say is like, you don't need to be an expert actually on a tax code. I don't expect anybody, but I want to break things down and explain them. These are the things that you need to know if you're going to be the business owner and you're going to be successful. You got to get you, you got to get the team in right in the beginning. That's what you did. Yeah. That's what you did too. Mm -hmm. And that makes a difference. Not only did you save thousands of dollars in taxes, but you also got good advice going forward. Yep. And also, um, you know, basically, um, you're going to get this information for free. So, I mean, that just definitely, um, those two books that I have would be like, like if I had a client come to my office and sit down, these would be the things that I, I would be explaining to them, Yeah, you know, step by Damn. step. No, for absolutely just, for free. He's not trying to make a dollar off y'all. Just go on his, his DM on him uh, on Instagram and he's literally going to send you the book for free, which is crazy that he's doing that, but okay. WC. Yeah. Like he's doing Hey man, doing it for the passion. Like the video guys. I see 2.2 K. We should be at 3000 right now. 3000 okay. right now. Lord. Right. Uh, what do we got Lauren. here? Lord Lorraine goes. Can you discuss or offer advice on how a U.S. citizen can create foreign LLCs or S corps, subsidiaries, foreign irre uh, irrevocable trusts, shell, shell companies, companies, and DBAs legally? That is, woo, that's a packed question in there. Um, U.S. Can citizen you create foreign LLCs or S corps, subsidiaries, US foreign irre irre irrevocable trusts, shell okay, companies, so and DBAs. Foreign LLCs or S corps, I don't know anything about be honest with you so i mean every jurisdiction every other country yeah. right now is different subsidiaries foreign irrevocable trust uh i no comment on that one sorry got it yeah appreciate this if you're gonna chapter. you gotta look into the you gotta look into the countries for which you're trying yeah, to do these so things yeah. every country is different bro yeah so he wouldn't be able to tell you that uh because it depends on what country you're trying to do it with yeah he's not there um uh, um so what else we got here shout out to wayne uh Get oh 10 youtube memberships thank you so much man i appreciate that shout out to you wayne um uh, Casey, Trav Casey Travis goes, I'm a trucker driver. Well, I think he means I'm a truck driver <laughs> and get paid at, at 1099. Should I open an LLC or S Corp? And is that legal yeah. to pay yourself if employed as an independent contractor, especially in the trucking industry? Yeah. So you're going to be a 10, you're 1099 immediately become an LLC S Corp. Give the person who's paying you, whoever's paying you on 1099, you're going to fill out a specific form. That's a W9 form on there. It's going to have the name, address of your business. And it's going to have the EIN number and you're going to give that to the lady and you say you're going to pay or whoever in the office is a guy and you're going to say you're going to pay the checks to me. Now, here's the W-9. You sign it and you say, I want the checks to come here now. And that's what's the W-9 form. So W-9 is basically a form to that. Let's, let's say um, I hire you know him to do some some consulting with me mm -hmm. and I'm going to pay him as an independent contractor. He's going to form an LLC. He's going to give me a W-9 so I can pay checks to that LLC. And then I know. At the end of the year, when I give him a 1099, I have the proper tax ID number, the name of the company, and the address. Okay. So he gives that to me, and he signs to say, please, Steve, give me the the checks in the name of this LLC. Bam. Yeah. I didn't know that truckers can be 1099 employees. So for all you guys out there, because a lot of truck drivers actually listen to us. Yeah. Yo, try to be a, te try to be a 1099, guys, if you can. And that way you Absolutely. can write off more and uh, more aggressively deduct your taxes. Absolutely. That's smart. legally. That's yeah. smarter. Yeah. So, and, and, and file your trucking company as a LLC and then switch over to an S -corp. S corp. All the truck drivers out there. Cause a lot of y'all listen to us free game. There you go. Mm -hmm. Um, Parismo HD goes, just finished my LLC paperwork for my mobile body paint repair company. I have the capital to purchase a van in between six to $10,000. Do I open the business account and purchase it finance or just buy it out cash? Thanks. Uglies. Good question. Great question. That does not matter whether you buy it with your personal check or not. As long as you have the paperwork to support that you're using it for your business and you have the paperwork that you purchased it, you just give that to your accountant. They will accept that. Most, you know, 90% of the, 90% of the 
company vehicles that people write off and purchase, they purchase them in their personal name because uh -huh. their businesses are new. They don't have established credit. Yeah. So they just typically buy them in their name. And then we just, I still list them. The IRS doesn't care as long as you're actually using it for business purpose. Yeah. That's all that matters. They don't care who is, who, they don't care how you procure it, it. No. Um, I think another important thing too, bro, is if this vehicle that you're about to buy is over 6,000 pounds, maybe yeah, finance it. That's a great, maybe finance yeah. it versus, versus buying yeah. it, uh, you know, um, Pay cash, all cash, yeah. Because then you can actually get. Remember, like we said before, um, what what is the? Do you know the statute that 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 the section one seventy nine? Section one seventy nine allows you to go ahead and write eighty percent off of a six thousand pound or more uh, weighted vehicle. And there's also bonus depreciation too that you can actually bam. Put it, yeah. So yeah, bro, if the vehicle it's a van, so it's probably going to be over six thousand van, uh, six thousand pounds. Buy that van, finance it. You can buy it under your personal name and still get the tax benefits, and you get eighty percent. So if it's a hundred thousand dollars, you can write off eighty thousand, and then. You get bonus depreciation on top of that. Amen. There you go, cool. my friend. Well, we just say, man, <laughs> bro, what other YouTube channel is giving you all this kind of sauce? I don't know anybody. Dave Ramsey? Not even him. Oh, oh just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> don't get into debt, man. Yeah, don't get into debt. Me. Don't buy real. Oh, ah, the credit real cards. Debt, ah, credit don't cards. Credit cards. Uh, don't do it. Oh. Uh, you know what I mean? And bro, it's like, bro. bro, like, I get it. Like, here's the thing. I like Dave Ramsey. Generally. He gives you, he gives you very good financial tips for someone who's kind of a moron with money yeah it's 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 what i call retard dummy, proof advice dummy proof but um yeah. but if you're a guy you want to be a business owner you want to be a real estate investor you have to take risk and taking risk a lot of the times means using other people's money um investing it into your business or in an asset class and then making money back from that and re aggressively reinvesting it so if you have if you're watching us you're already rp aware and understand how the world works to a degree you have some level of competence some level of um, critical thinking skills. If you're watching content like ours, you're not necessarily a full slave of the matrix if you're watching this stuff. So dude, you can exercise the discipline to take that money, invest it properly, and put, funnel it into a business versus funneling it into stupid stuff that isn't going to make you money. Amen. Well said. Yeah. Um, Persian Prince. Uh, yeah, thank you guys. Uh, thank you for this, guys. Especially the nugget behind why register the S-Corp holding company in Delaware. I'm at this decision stage on my real estate business, so this was helpful. We got you. Down the Monko. Yeah, because having it out of at a Delaware, like I said before, it allows me to get a business credit card that allows me to charge everything easily to Is this one. Guy snitching on himself. No. <laughs> the money I made on the table. <laughs> Yuri Bezmenov goes, bought a rental house with money I made under the table over the last 10 years. Oh, man. Okay. Here Allegedly. Haven't filed that, taxes in roughly 10 is that years. His real name? I hope not. How can I protect myself when filing? How do I claim my money saved to purchase rental to pay minimal tax? This guy, bro. This dude. <laughs> <laughs> you go. So for, first off, I, I would never suggest anybody to do what you're doing, obviously. But um, first thing I do when I get clients like <laughs> you, because they do, they exist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so yeah. here's the first thing I would do. Get your transcripts going back six years because the IRS only goes back six years. Okay? okay. Get them. Step one. And what do you want to do? You want to find out in there is has anybody filed a 1099 on you that we require you to, that triggers their filing requirement? Mm. If not, and there nothing, nothing shows up, um, don't snitch on yourself, obviously. <laughs> and and I just, you know, I would say, hey, you got a you got a 1099 for you know 25 grand. Did you know that you had that? You didn't file. I mean, let's get that filed. Sometimes these guys wind up getting refunds. The problem is you you can only get those refunds. They expire after three years. So we don't do that in a timely manner. But if you have nothing on your transcripts and they're just empty, then you really don't have anything in the IRS computer system that requires you to file. So you're probably okay. <laughs> How but, the hell did you buy a rental house with money you made under the table when you have to? You must have bought a cash. No, 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 doc loan. Yeah, he, there's no way he was the loan. Unless, mm, like, maybe he had a lot of money to put down on it. Yeah, maybe he yeah. had the cash. I yeah. mean, bro, I'd be interested how the hell you. He either did it with private equity, aka hard money loan. <laughs> you know what time that is. Mm. Or he or he bought it cash. You know, on YouTube, mm. I'm not even going to go further than that. You guys know what that sound effect means, though. So, yeah. <laughs> that, yeah. So get pull your transcripts. You can pull More your transcripts. Yeah. Well, you got to plug in, in the um, setup with somebody. Yeah. Some, 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 that's some a good question, there. though. You know, that's a very common thing, especially here in Florida. When I came down here, I'm like, what? What's wrong with these people? You didn't work at ten. You gave them five-year taxes. Yeah, I like because I came from New York, and like more people are more like you know compliant there. Yeah, than here. And then you come down here, like some like it's just people crazy. Do weird odd jobs. I don't think wow. Miami and Florida take money in cash, and these are like celebrities and these people are actual like presidents. And I'm like, what are you taking money, money in cash, bro? I have, I have a doctor. <laughs> I have a doctor with an established practice. It does very well. This fucking guy hasn't ta filed his taxes in over ten years. What the? How did these guys yeah. get around? I don't know. I don't know. So I got it. The hey, first man. thing I do is I pull the transcripts. 
just to see what's there. See what the IRS has in their computer Bro, system on you. They're going to say, catch me when I die, nigga. <laughs> catch me when I die. <laughs> All right. Uh, where are we at here? Yeah, Yuri. Listen to what Steve just told you. Keep yourself out of jail. Shout out to the IRS for gifting 10 YouTube memberships. Yeah, he's uh -oh. watching. Uh -oh. YouTube IRS is in the chat right now. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, RP Josh, I have a cleaning business and a painting business with my brothers-in-law. They are from Venezuela. I can't have an LLC text as an S corp, so should I leave it as a LLC or a C corp? Now the th see the thing with uh, when you go to S corp, there's one nuance is you can't have any foreign members. So I don't know if they're U.S. citizens uh, or not, a resident. But that's the thing is like, so you'd have to whoever the person is that's going to be ultimately in the form the S corp, you can't have a foreign resident uh, or foreign individual on there. Why does he just? How about if he just does L S corp by himself and pay them out as ten ninety nine? Yeah, there you go, my friend. Yep. That's probably the best way. Do the S corp, get the tax benefit, and then pay them off uh, from a ten ninety nine perspective. Yeah. That's what exactly what I was cool. suggesting. Um, have a high five fig a month online business. Our LLC is currently set up in Delaware with a registered agent. Now we're looking to set up in the UAE free zone. Any tips registering internationally while living in the United States? Yeah, no, I don't. Sorry. I'm, this is strictly U.S. tax code. Yeah. Guys, we're going to. Okay, there's a lot of questions here. Up. Yeah. Well, wow. guys, we're going to have to bump it up to 50 and up uh, for, for questions. But I will read the ones that came in. Let's see here. Um, Aaron M. Uh, Angus. Hey, FNF, I'm just tuning in. I love what I'm hearing so far. Are you guys also going to cover business credit card today while Steve is here? No, no but we will cover that on another episode yeah. because we knew that we would have to a lot of certain time. For I knew you guys are going to have a bunch of questions. So we kind of gave the sauce and then now we're answering questions. But we will do a business credit card episode either next Monday or the Monday after that. We're debating whether we're going to do travel credit cards first or business credit cards first for 2023. Probably travel. You know what? Mo, do a quick poll in the chat. See what they want. Um, on YouTube, do a quick poll, uh, business credit card or travel credit card first. And then that will, that'll be what we cover next Monday. Um, okay. So what else do we got here? Brian Grant, um, Brian Grant goes 24 years old, um, 62 K W two worker and have an LLC for business services company operational for less than one year, making less than 10 K per, uh, for this a year suggestions to lower personal taxes. Do good question. A lot of people are in this position right here yeah. where he has an LLC. He's making 62 from his W two job. He's making about 10 K from his side hustle. Um, how to lower personal taxes. I mean, so basically, uh, one year LLC, I would still do the S corp, even though it's 10 grand. I don't know. I don't know. I, I'm hoping that maybe you're going to make more than 10 grand on this business going forward. Mm -hmm. But then from there, now you're opening up yourself up to the entire tax code and you can write off your phone. You can write off your car, any travel, you know, right now, a big thing that people are missing with the, the IRS has given everybody a hundred percent deduction for meals. Oh, really? So I take a lot of clients out. Wow. 100%, yeah. so I, I read off all my meals, 100%. They did that because that COVID. was under Trump, right? Yeah, Trump well, because COVID. Okay. Because COVID, yeah. So they got, you know, they got decimated with, with all the shutdowns with COVID and stuff. So yeah. it's, to it's, kind of stimulate the restaurant business yeah. back. So they Steve, tell, yeah. You know what I did, bro? So remember me. I told you when me and my sister an employee? Yeah. So I made her an employee. Whenever we go to eat, it's a write off. Yeah. <laughs> it's a write off. That's a business. She's like, oh, you're so nice. Brother, that's no, a nigga. business meeting. Right that's a business me yeah, that, that's, an, that's a yeah, that's an employee meeting. Um, yeah, so definitely, so yeah. that's a hundred percent. So I mean, and it just make sure when you you know <laughs> you're using the card of your business when you're doing that. I mean, it makes it a lot easier. So just use your business card for that. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I have a lawn service here in Louisiana. I'm just read. Uh, it's just me doing it. Should I keep it as an LLC? Escort, my friend. Yeah. Switch that thing over ASAP. Um. And for all you guys that have your LLC and it's been that way for a year or two, bro, y'all need to switch now. Yeah. Like now. Okay. Like I'm literally talking like as we're talking. How do? How, okay. Let's say someone is watching, uh, listening to this podcast yeah. right now as we speak. They have a side hustle. Maybe they're at their W-2 job. They've had their LLC open for a year. What should they do right now to switch over to an escort? So basically fill out those two forms. Get my book because I walk you through that process and you, okay. go, and you go through there. And I'll have those two videos that loaded up soon on exactly how to check the boxes and fill it because it's very easy. And then you fax the forms yeah. to the IRS. So yeah, get that. And then um, 88, you know, hope, IRS form 8832. 8832 and, and then, then 2553. Okay. They're easy forms to fill out. I mean, okay. it literally take like maybe 10 minutes. And that will transition their LLC over to an to S Corp. An S -corp. And Both forms or just one of them? Uh, both forms. Both You're gonna forms need both. Yeah. And then um, so basically, but there's one because if you're late on it, then you have to you have to check a certain box to say I'm asking for late relief. And I'll explain that in more detail. That's what I'm gonna walk you guys through. Because I don't even like doing this stuff, honestly. So I'm just gonna give it away for free because when people come to me, you know, it I don't want to do all this stuff. So I'd rather <laughs> the client like do it and like there's no value in me doing this for them. You know yeah. what I mean? Okay. Um, so yeah, man. All y'all that are listening, switch over to an S Corp immediately. He just told you guys the two forms. Um, IRS form 8832 and sorry, 
was that 2553. 2553. Yeah. You can literally Google them right now and start yeah. filling them out, guys. Yeah. Yeah. Just, yeah. Um, the sauce would not exist without you two. Don DeMarco, for all of you, truly grateful. We got you, bro. Don't do That's what we're trying to do, man. Trying to change lives, help you guys become better men. Shout Wayne out Wayne again. Getting 10 more YouTube memberships. Shout Nobody, out to Wayne supporting, bro. Shout out to you, Wayne, man. Because, bro, ain't nobody giving y'all more value on YouTube than us. Everybody else is reacting to stupid-ass videos, telling you guys about, oh, but this is what's going on, and crying and shit like that. We're giving you guys solutions to That's actually help you today out of this stuff, man. We yeah, actually today. give y'all actionable information in detail with experts to help you guys get to where you want to go. And the most important part? We do it completely free. Yeah. And look, we're not charging y'all look, nothing for this. We live good so you can live good. Yeah. Simple. You know, you guys are sending in the super chats and answering, but bro, it's worth the value. I mean, actually, you 20 know what? bucks to answer a, a, we a should do question? business credit cards because business credit cards give you access to a lot more than just I was travel. Saying to yeah. say the same well, I want to see what the poll, yeah. what did the poll say, Mo? Listen, listen yeah. business. 75% business yeah. credit right. cards. Yeah. So business credit cards. Yeah. Okay. Business. Yeah. Um, shout out to you, Wayne. Thank you so much. The process, Nate Tilly's pursuit of excellence goes, yo, I reached out to Fresh, the processing. I want to teach how to get local businesses more clients as a service. Been doing it 40K a month for three years now. I think y'all are widely overlooking and sleeping on this opportunity. Much love, y'all. Thanks. Shout out to you, bro. Um, I'll, I'll look into it. Okay. Um, IRS W stream, why y'all need to like this video? <laughs> <laughs> w stream why y'all need to like the video steve giving y'all all this valuable info to improve your life some of y'all are going to hear from me in april i always get mine <laughs> <laughs> that's true, <laughs> yeah, that's true. Down the one way or another uh, i rest in the chat man uh avery watson he's he's definitely looking at that dude that hasn't followed for 10 years <laughs> <laughs> why would you say that bro <laughs> I would, need a, I would need a in on account with a random name. Hopefully that's what it was, bro. But that's that's bro. crazy. Okay, Avery Watson goes. I'm working on the re, uh, irrevoc the revocable trust now with properties. The lawyer said I should be LLC and land trust. Should I be an S corp? Also, I'm a travel healthcare worker. I have option of 1099. Um, if I switch, won't I need to wait for two years to buy more houses? So you have a revocable. Uh, so it, I mean, this is real estate again. So that's the, I'm going to go back to um, real estate. You can remain an LLC. You don't need to do the escort. Yeah. Good question here. It says, I'm a travel healthcare worker. I have the option of a 1099. If when I it, switch one, I need to wait two years to buy more houses. This is a good question. Because, oh. Yeah. So, oh, this, yeah, this, yeah, so yeah. it's a two-part question. question. I'll tell you right now, yeah. bro. Do not. Okay? I made this mistake. Yep. Do all your real estate stuff while you're still a W-2 employee. Okay? And then... When you're ready to go ahead and do the, the whole entrepreneur 1099, 1099 stuff, do it after your real estate stuff is done. Yeah. Because if you plan to use loans from a bank, the worst thing you can do, this is literally say life-saving yeah. advice. Write this shit down. I'm gonna tell yeah. Everybody in here. If you're thinking about buying real estate, guys, okay, and you have a W-2 job, and you're like, you know what? I'm going to quit this job and do my entrepreneurship stuff because it makes more money. Don't do it. Stay with your W-2 job because lenders like to see consistent income from a safe job two years. over uh, uh, you being an entrepreneur. Because oh, if you are an oh, entrepreneur, what they're going to say is we want two years of tax returns with your entrepreneur uh, venture. You're not going to have it because you just started You just started it. So nice. stay at your W-2 job, do your side hustle, get the real estate, and then once you're done and you're prepared to go ahead and go two years without buying real estate, then you can go ahead and transition and go the 1099 entrepreneur route. Because I'm telling you, it will one. mess you up with getting yeah. loans. Here's another golden one. And that's great. Yeah. That's perfect. Yeah. However, that was my mistake. You are going to be in the same line of work where he wasn't in the same line of work. So he went from government job to doing something different. So get a CPA. Why? And I do these letters all the time for this specific reason. Uh -huh. You can have your CPA write a letter to the underwriter saying you were a W-2 employee and you're still doing the same type of work and sign off on it and vouch for it. Oh, wow. Oh. Yeah. That's so that's a way around it. it. The same line of work. The two-year thing. Yeah. Okay. But you're right with the business stuff. Once they do that, you know, it creates a profit. It creates a like, oh, what's going on now? Yeah. Um, Lenders hate to see as, that. As long as they see it's the same, like, oh, this is health work. Oh, he just changed it to the same income. Got it. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So just, and it's, you need a CPA. You need a CPA to, to do it write for you. you a letter. Yeah. So form a relationship with that CPA because okay, you're going to need somebody to help you with the S Corp stuff and the tax filings on that. And then they're going to be able, once they need it, they're going to ask for it. And he could do the letter for you or she could. Fantastic. Do that. Dude, yeah. that's literally life saving advice yeah. because so, so two, two options. If you're, let's say, a health, a traveling healthcare worker, like, like traveling nurses do this a lot, et cetera. Yeah. And you want to go ahead and go the 1099 route and you're staying in that line of work and you're just switching to 1099 so you can get better tax benefits, 
make sure you get that letter from your CPA because yeah. then it'll it'll kind of be, hey still same line of work same earning pretty much boom they could write what does it got to be notarized probably no they just sign it I just, just sign it? just put it on a letterhead I, I write what the you know I say like what do they need to hear okay, and that suffices most of the time it. yeah okay nice. so that'll suffice for the lender or if you are gonna go and do let's say a completely different side hustle let's say you want to be a fitness instructor but you're also doing the 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 nursing thing then no nah, man just wait get your real estate stuff done before you quit that job or decide to go the entrepreneur route because i made that mistake i tried to pick up real estate property as once i left the government and it was a lot harder for me to get a loan yeah. guys yeah. even if you're making a bunch of money they don't care they want two years of tax returns yeah and tell them how many cpa letters did you need on a lot of deals because these banks were they're, yeah they're being yeah riches. yeah, yeah. So steve wrote yeah. me a couple of uh letters guys uh to get around that stuff, just, so you know they just put yeah. them there they don't even look they just put them in there it's just, yeah it's, and they want more profit loss yeah. statements it's going to be a pain in the ass dude so it, yo have that's another thing too. Yeah. Is if you're going to get into business, get yourself reading a financial statement for dummies. And I'm not even kidding you. You don't have to be an accountant or just just basic. Learn how to read a financial statement because you're going to run a business. You're going to want to know where you stand, and yeah. uh, that's going to you know that's important. So yeah. Um, so the really good question, bro, because a lot of people make that mistake. They try to buy real estate and they just quit their W-2 job. Oh, man, that's going to be a problem unless you plan to buy houses cash or do hard money loans, which you don't want to do that. Um, <laughs> you, you, uh, you're going to have issues with fi firing, finding um, lenders yeah. to, to, to give you money. Uh, let's see here. Uh, AJ, Mary, got a house uh, with my wife. Oh, man. Uh, allegedly <laughs> filed the loan under single. What do I do if I'm trying to put this under an LLC for tenants? I do have a small ATM business under a different LLC. Wife's on board with post prenuptial uh, provided she has one, one house. One house. What's your thoughts on that, Steve? So Mary filed got a house with under single. Allegedly filed the loan under single. Trying to what put do under... I do if I'm trying to put my under my LLC for tenants? Mm -hmm. Um. Well, she's now on. Um. He's married now, though. So she, wait. So oh, yeah, he yeah, filed yeah. the okay the loan single. So now you're on the hook for the for the you know. Um, so she has access now to rights to the property, but you're on the hook for the loan liability. One hundred percent. That doesn't seem very fair. Um, I do have an ATM business under a different LLC. Oh, yeah, keep that separate. Wife on board with posts prenuptial. Yeah. So. So it sounds like you're on the hook 100% for the loan, and she has 50% of the rights to the property, and not on the hook for, for the loan. Because he so he got the house deal. While, while he was yeah. married with, with her, so yeah. it would be considered his name. marriable assets. Yeah, at that but point. then they probably put he's probably put her in that title too. They're both, but then the loan is they're going to come after him for the loan. <laughs> <laughs> hey man, nah, come on man. <laughs> God damn. So yeah, but definitely keep the LLC separately. You know, so I'm not sure what you're trying to ask. It's like, yeah, I mean, you know, hopefully things work out. You know? I mean, you can't get he's trying it, to bro. put it under an LLC for tenants. I think yeah. so. He probably wants to rent that house out, but he didn't specify. If it's yeah, because you if could it's do a... the quick claim deed to the LLC, so that shouldn't be a problem. The bank doesn't care because ultimately, but there's... either way, his wife is going to have access because he's married to her, right? Yeah, but ultimately, the bank has what's called a mortgage that trumps all, so they don't care about who's title this and that. They 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 have the first first rights to that property if you default on a loan. So as far as doing the LLC, yeah, do it to, to protect your liability and the asset. Um, but the, and we also the don't financing is something different. That's, yeah. that's, that's a whole separate issue. So that the, the two don't have anything to do with the I other. I wish you specified if it was a single family home or if it's like a multi. multi yeah, because yeah. If, if, he's, if, if it's a single family home, he's got to leave. I mean, but if he's going to put tenants in there, I would say definitely. You got LLC in anyway, right? Yeah, yeah. For, yeah. So regardless whether it's a single family home or it's a multi property house and you're going to still live at it, right? And maybe rent other units out, you got to LLC it anyway. So yeah, because if they sue you, they can come after your personal assets. So that's a layer of protection for the limit liability. So yeah, you want to put that over it. Got okay. It. All right. And don't buy a house with your wife. Like, come on, man. <laughs> Shayam Balero goes, wait, no foreign owners. So as an Amazon wholesale FBA owner, US LLC, not from or live in the US, uh, from Africa, no excuse being broke. I can't switch to an S corp. Uh, S corp. Okay, he's an he's a foreign oh, owner. Oh yeah, you're a foreigner. Yeah, unfortunately, no. Yeah, you got it. No, you can't do it. That's unfortunate. Yeah, some okay. people do get away with it. Actually, you know, I don't even know if the IRS system is like because they they'll get they'll get a tax ID number, the tax identification number. Yeah, which kind of acts like a social security number. Um, you know, I've seen it where people have set it up and come to me, and I find out later like they there's there's partners in there that are like foreign, and I don't know if the IRS has a has a 
mechanism to check on that, to be honest with you, because I've never seen anybody get checked on it before. So it's kind of like, I think, um, you know, a loop. Yeah, it could be a little bit. Yeah. I mean, I wouldn't recommend people to do that, but, um, you know, going in only, but I've seen it done where it's done and it gets done successfully. So guys, by the way, we got uh 2.9, uh, almost 3000 y'all watching on YouTube, but we only got 2.4 K likes. Let's get up to 3000 likes, man. Like the video. We're giving you a lot of sauce. Uh, thank you. Triamba. Uh, who's up next? Um, Mo? Rumble rants. Rumble rants. Rumble rants. Uh, what about these other guys here below? Or th th those came up before? Um, cut off because we're tied on time. Okay. So, so what? But but did they come in before? No, these no. Are, these are later. These are later. Okay, guys. Yeah, fifty and up for um the super chats, guys. Rumble you... rants. Um, uh, DeAndre Reason goes. If you have a business, you want to transition into an S corp, but also plan to invest in rental properties. How should you set that up? LLC, no S corp. Yep, LLC for real estate property, guys, because it's considered passive income. Um, and then if you want to take it a step further, like I do, you can uh, have one shell corporation out of Delaware, and then uh, that c controls all your uh, LLCs that are per, uh, each uh, then, particular property. Yeah, and then each property is going to be a separate LLC. Yes, with a separate yes. account with a separate, separate bank account. account. Yep. With your yeah, a number. And I will talk to you guys about um, me and Steve are actually in the process right now of setting up how collect how to collect money from tenants how to pay utilities, et cetera. That's going to be on the next episode of actually managing all those different properties and collecting money from tenants and doing it in a way that won't pull your hair out. Oh, that's great. Yeah, yeah we got something. We'll do a full episode yeah. for y'all on that. Me and Steve are right now in the process of setting up the system, but I will tell you guys how the system works as soon as we have it done. That's going to be really yeah. valuable for you guys that get have multiple that doors. Yep, that are going to have multiple doors. Um, What's up, gents? I currently have an LC. I'm a 1099 truck driver. I want to have my own fleet of W-2 trucks drivers working for me, and I want to invest in real estate eventually. Should I still switch to S-Corp? Yes. For the trucking company? Yes. yes. Absolutely. Uh, what else here? Well, this and, is good, man, because we got a lot yeah. of guys that are set up as LLCs that didn't even know this stuff. Yeah. yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. Wow. And then the sole... Uh, Proprietors, I'm like, bro, that's yeah, yeah, yeah. What else? Else? the guy running the restaurant. How about that? Yeah, for how many years? We, see, we just wow. saved him tens see, of thousands of again, dollars. You don't know what you don't know, yeah. So now you know you can make a change for it, but I mean, we, we're, we're not taught to like, actually like learn this stuff in school, anyway. Right. So it's kind of like that's you gotta learn problem. on your yeah. own, yeah. So, yeah. uh, BPO yeah. says, I'm a commercial fisherman and I file all taxes under my name. Is there a more advantageous way to approach taxes for my own? owner operated fishing business yep i got i got a few of them yeah so definitely yeah you want and you know what because you're buying a lot of gas you get it you get a tax credit for the fuel on oh, oh well file and yeah that's it's pretty substantial um nice yeah so you want to file a yeah definitely but you can definitely become an llc and s corp definitely cool yeah um what's up next here uh six nine goes i bought a tesla in california for 9500 um tax incentive i'm signed up for the uber would I be able to form an S corp and buy the car of my of myself and work it as an S corp after? I think he means buy the car for myself and work it as an S corp after. And he's uh he bought a Tesla to drive Uber. Yeah, so definitely it doesn't matter that you bought it after. Um, so yeah, as long as it's business suits, which obviously Uber is, mm -hmm. and then you're just gonna have Uber pay you in the LLC. You're gonna convert it to an S corp, and you're gonna get the deduction for the depreciation on the car that you bought. And it's all good. Uber's a valid side hustle. Yeah, it is. Like it's a very and 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 they're able to go ahead and and do that as a ten ninety nine, right? Absolutely. So yeah. they're able yeah. to write everything well, off. They're smart. Yeah. Uber is Uber smart. Uber's Uber super smart. Uber's super smart. Because they're a contractor too, right? If, if I'm not correct. Yeah. So yeah, super ten ninety nine. So okay, so okay, for uh, real quick. So let's say someone here wants a side hustle, but they can't. Maybe they don't have a skill set yet. They're not able to do so. The best way to do it is create an LLC. Yeah. Turn it uh, an LLC for Uber. Turn it into an S corp. Yep. Go ahead and procure a vehicle. Yep. They can write the purchase of that vehicle off. Yeah. E even mean, if it's yeah. under six thousand pounds. Yeah, because you still get the depreciation. Depreciation. And there's depreciation. Also okay. depreciation so too, if you it? can, guys, try to get a car that's over six thousand pounds. Use it for so that you can get that eighty percent tax write off, as well as the depreciation. Do it for Uber. Your ten nine employees are able to write off. Maybe if you put, put bottles of water in your car, yep. if you keep your, your car washes, yep. everything that you do for that vehicle to maintain it to, for Uber, and then you can write all that stuff off. Even the worst case scenario, if you get a used car, it's not six thousand. You're still going to get twenty percent because the car is depreciated over five years. Yeah, so I'll buy a used car. Five years. Yeah, a used car for sure. Yeah, uh, because a lot of miles on it. But uh, they should finance it though, right? 
if it's over six thousand pounds yeah finance. depending on the price on it i know the, the rates right now are kind of the, tough right the now. thing with uber though you're gonna put miles on a car and it's gonna yeah. fuck it up yeah i would so definitely I, not I, buy a brand I, I new car not to do that because i did it at the beginning of my career and it was <laughs> i know no you don't bro talk, that was a great one because i had yeah. the x-ray company i bought a fleet of of uh of Honda elements because we had these x-ray machines going in there yeah and i bought them all brand new thinking it was all cool and everything mm. you know and then i winded up like your we best drove so much is to buy a used pre-owned i car did that yeah six thousand miles oh. and over sorry, six thousand pounds sorry, pounds and pre-owned then, over six thousand pounds yeah and then okay. at that point like i would just make sure the car has no issues of course it's pre-owned, yeah. it shouldn't yeah yeah and then drive that but buying a Amen. new car for, for, yeah don't buy so don't mm. buy a brand new uh, so they, should they finance it or should finance it right because they're basically so they could get the full tax write-off because you're you're writing off the six thousand pounds off the purchase price not what you, what you put down right yeah if you can get yeah a if you can get at least rates, pre-owned that's rates, awesome get yeah. at least a pre-owned if you can for yeah. Uber, well, then, i'm saying you write off the whole lease yeah you write off the whole lease yeah payment you know the so each payment yeah you can write it off so yeah, man, I think I think leasing well, is the a great way to go for Uber. Money on the side, yeah, and if get benefits well from taxes, then yeah. awesome. But Until the, you can get a real skill set that will pay you more money. Yeah. Problem with leasing though, don't they have that mileage uh, thing where you return it in? The mileage. They do actually. So that's I would go use like that's what yeah. I did. That's so what I meant. For, yeah. Actually, you know what? For Uber yeah. itself, because the miles you want to finance it and then uh, yeah. six thousand pounds, like yeah, like you're saying. Okay. Yeah. Bam. There you go. For all y'all that want a side hustle, that that's, that, bro, that's but, Uber yo, right bro, there. Back in the day, bro, when I did Uber, there was a big surge, like every almost every weekend. Yeah, bro, I made hell of money, bro. Yeah. I remember, I'll never forget. It was New Year's, um, and it was like everyone was out partying. I was on Uber, bro. I made that night one night, bro, one thousand dollars. Wow, that's awesome. Yeah, and I did only like what twelve trips. Wow, wow. airport for Lauderdale, Las Olas. Las Olas that makes to sense. Miami, that makes back sense. up. Airport. It was like, bro, money yeah. raking in. But so, nowadays it's tough, though. Yeah. So you know what, man? We should probably do an episode for them on literally, you want a side hustle? Just a whole Uber guide. Bro, I, I got all you my- You did it, right? I got you all my it? shit back home. Though. I made my notes, everything like that. We could do it. We could That's do it for y'all idea. because a lot of these guys that are young mm-hmm. yeah. might not have a skill set yet yeah. to, to make uh, a viable income on the side. Yeah. So what we could do is we could tell y'all, hey, this is how you can make money on Step the side one, from your, your job. The car to purchase. Or use your full-time job until you get a skill set. How to purchase so, it and then go into details about Uber. Yeah. yeah, because yeah. Uber, you can absolutely make money and get tax benefits at the same time. I didn't you even know, think about this. There's, a smart, there's smart people that they work maybe 40 or 50 miles away from their house and they, they sign up for Uber or Lyft. And then what they do is they try to get a ride going back to pick up a couple of rides. To either to work or back to work, mm. they got to go there anyway. So then they they'll pick up a ride. They say, "Okay, I'm available." They'll pick up a couple of rides, drop them off before they get to work, go to work, and then try to get some rides after. I've met wow. a couple guys like that. Damn, smart. Yeah, that's clever, guys. Two point five k likes, so we're giving y'all all this sauce. I need you guys to like the video so we get to three thousand likes. Come on, goddamn. man, like the video because we're giving you guys so much goddamn value right now. It's wild. AJ, we'll be going two hours plus, giving y'all nonstop constant value, man. Single family home, VA loan. She's Colombian, wanted no part in the purchase. Stay at home, Colombian. I found y'all after the fact. Yeah, you fucked up. Uh, doing a Chris Crow method. Appreciate what y'all do. <laughs> Looking forward to the business CC video for leveraging capital. Yeah, um, man. Yes, yeah, so we got a single family home, VA loan. She's Colombian, wanted no part in the purchase. Good, uh, but bro, if you bought it while you're with her, eh. bro, she's Colombian. Yeah, she might. She don't want to part now, nigga. Yeah, yeah. But, but after the fact, she go all that yeah, part, if nigga. If you're, if you're married Yo. to her, if you married her and you bought the house, bro, then that's considered. I mean, watch her episodes. With uh, the the divorce attorneys, they they'll tell Don't you that that's considered. Um, and hopefully, you didn't bring her from Colombia. Uh, so marriage, America, mar- marriage asset. You the, probably just, did. Is she automatically entitled to fifty percent of his military like retirement? When I don't he, know if they, they got they married. Are, oh, I don't know Wait, if he's married. Yeah, he said he's married. married. Yeah. See, that's no, the thing with the, the military. Last shot, he, yeah, so that's like this a, same that's guy. Oh, it's the same guy. Oh, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. He is married. Oh man. Okay, and it's a same. Okay, so following up. Yeah. Okay, so it's a single family. So he's gonna have to move out to rent it. Yeah. You're gonna have to move out more than likely to rent that thing. Uh, so yeah, you got an LLC anyway. She wanted no part in the purchase, but bro, she might still be entitled to some of it. If I was because a Col- you bought it when you were married to her. If I was a Colombian girl, hey man, she don't know what she don't know. I'll say the same thing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you better not let her hear this call. Hey man, yeah, yeah. You, she better not be watching this podcast <laughs> yeah, bro. with you, bro. <laughs> yeah, bro. <laughs> hey, honey. <laughs> no, I'm less English. Correct. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> Perfecto. She probably sitting there so right now watching this thing. Like, mm, okay, we got this gotcha. boy. <laughs> she better not be watching this with you, bro. Woo! Yeah, man. All right. <laughs> <laughs> what do you guys think about real estate wholesaling? Uh, great way to get your feet wet, wet in the in, real estate game door. early, but yeah. you don't want to be doing that all the time, Forever. bro. You use that to get your feet wet, and then you actually want to go ahead, bro. Y'all don't want to be these people that are just leasing Airbnbs or doing wholesaling or whatever. You want to be the actual owner so you get the real tax benefits from real estate. So you want to hustle at the beginning, become a business owner, 
we reap the benefits with passive income at the end, pretty much. Yeah, so. because a lot of y'all that do like wholesaling and do um um Airbnb uh, arbitrage, etc. Yeah. Y'all are doing all the work for the owner, and yeah. he gets he gets the money, and he's getting all the benefits, and he ain't doing nothing. I think they call it like grunt work. Yeah, you're doing a lot of the grunt work for him. Pretty much. You're making him all the money. Exactly. Yeah, you're making yeah. some money yeah. as well. But, bro, why not? And he's getting tax benefits. Yeah. And then they say, oh, I'm an entrepreneur, bro. Yeah. Look at me. I'm like, shorty. Shorty. Yeah. You're a worker. Yeah. You're a worker, shorty. You're a worker, you're a worker bro. bro. You out here working for a ninja that really owns the property, that's getting all the benefits. He's just pimping you to go ahead <laughs> and, and find a them. tenants for Airbnb. Come on, man. Spell entrepreneur. Yeah. E N T A. P E N E. Okay, cool. It's spelled uh, I D I O T. That an idiot. That's what you are. Uh, Peter, <laughs> doing twenty k a month cash, no job, having an LLC for previous business. <sighs> <laughs> Yo, it says it's with a tingling. Yeah, tingling. Okay, Wait, bro. hold on. Oh, okay. Okay. Come on, man. No job. Yeah, having an LLC for my previous business. <laughs> Any advice on how to set myself up the right way to look good for the IRS? <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Entrepreneurial. <laughs> What's your thoughts on this, Steve? Ay, uh, yeah, ay, yeah. ay. Get somebody to write that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> he's, like, he's like, get somebody. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> hey, man, you know what you got to do, bro? You said do a 20K a month Turn cash, yourself no in. Job. <laughs> Turn yourself in, bro. <laughs> Turn yourself in now, bro. Bruh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Yo, but I, I, I will say this, though. I know guys that have that same setup and they'll like just blow it in the club. He do, he's scamming or doing something, bro. I'm put as marketing <laughs> in the club, buying bottles and buying tables. But Yo. I like the 20,000, uh, but no job. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, he did Uber, bro. He just took it in cash. <laughs> Yo. I don't, I don't know if some of y'all, if y'all be serious sometimes with the stuff y'all be saying, bro. Like, you gotta be trolling. <laughs> yeah, yeah, man. Forget about control. it. This guy, bro. Oh, Lord. <sighs> okay. Yeah. You need to find a job. To, to, <laughs> you need to find a job, bro. Oh, man. That's Steve. Yes. This was two hours of nothing but value. Facts. That was great. And I was like, wow. I looked at the time. I, I think like, the chat got so much value from me, bro. Yeah. They're like, they owe you some money, man. Yeah. That's awesome. Awesome. Time stamps That's are going to awesome. be yeah. uh, down below in detail, by the way. But where can they find you? And any last comments or thoughts for the chat? So definitely. Um, just... Get DM me if you want those two free books because I have it on a Sam card where you actually have to pay for it. So one's like seven dollars, the other like twenty six dollars, whatever. So I'm gonna give those to you guys free for free. And again, that's like having a free consult. Look, I would sit down with a client like for an hour, and that would be like a three hundred fifty dollar, four hundred dollar, whatever uh, consult. So get take advantage of that. DM me at Seeing Beyond the Numbers. That's for uh, on Instagram and on YouTube as well. Um, I don't really have much on the U on the YouTube side of things, so I'm gonna start to start with the Instagram stuff. But in the coming days, weeks, months, there's gonna be a lot of content, a lot of lot of uh, informational stuff. And on we're there. gonna bring you back, probably with Roger, to talk about how we set up yes. Um, yes. my real estate properties yeah. and how to set up a system to get paid without headaches, collecting late late dues, yeah. all that stuff. I'm gonna go over with y'all yeah. how to system assist, uh, um, systematically systematically right collect rent from your tenants in a no nonsense headache free fashion. I've went through the headaches already. I've already evicted a couple of tenants, etc. We're going to go over the do's and don'ts. Um and um Roger and Roger is my property manager and my real estate agent and Steve is my accountant. So we're going to go over detail how I do everything, guys, and we're going to be real transparent with y'all, man. We give give y'all the sauce. Yeah, so my 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 brother and my uh my father had um a lot large buildings in uh, New York City. I'm New York I mean in New York State. Um they had like a couple hundred apartments. And they could have benefited from that system that Roger yep. and I were talking about. Yep. Um, we're yeah, almost done with it, guys. Really good. That's really good. I was, I'm we very We could probably impressed. do it by next month. I think we'll yeah, be fully me, up yeah. and running. We're like 80, 90% of the way, guys. And then once it's up and running and everything is being collected correctly, et cetera, I'm going to show y'all A to Z yeah. how to set up once you have real estate property. And it's actually, you know what? I wish That's I had amazing. done it sooner. I know. I wish I had done this shit sooner, man, mm. versus doing it all at the end. And I'm going to teach what a you headache guys that you would have saved. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah, man. So I uh, will literally walk walk through with y'all because being a landlord, if you don't do it right, we'll create a lot of headaches for you guys. Yeah. I'm going to teach you guys how to avoid a lot of the headaches that I endured. At least you got your, your hair back. I got my hair back. Between <laughs> dealing with the, during the daytime, dealing with real estate and then at nighttime, dealing with annoying girls. So uh, <laughs> um, guys, he is Steve Colon. Go check him out uh, at Instagram. Seeing beyond the numbers, man. Yep. We gave you all two hours plus of value. A lot of this stuff is life saving stuff that will save you tens of thousands of dollars. Um, not on taxes, if not millions for all, all you guys that have big businesses. 
Um, check him out. His links are all below, guys. Get the free books. DM him um, on Instagram. Just type in Fresh and Fit um, on Seeing Beyond the Numbers, and he'll send you his two free books, one on how to mitigate your tax liability as a W-2 employee, and the other one on how to set up your LLC properly and then switch over to an S-Corp, which we already discussed the benefits of doing so, multitude of different um, the benefits. And, uh, yeah, Steve, I'll give and, you the last and, word. Yeah, and that one's on uh, – it's got the rental stuff with the cost segregation and depreciation oh, and all that stuff for rental. That's nice. specific for, for awesome. the newbie getting into the rentium. And I do cover a little bit about the program that you're talking about with a, just a tiny bit okay. in there, but it's not very detailed on that section. But, yeah, definitely get that. There's a lot of good information in there. And that's it. It's always a pleasure to be here. I'm really glad that you guys are, you know, back, back up and running and – Things are going good, and this is like these are the shows that matter, man. That really matter. Like this yeah. is this is this is the whole the whole reason why you guys do what you do. So so and and this episode is for everybody. So whether you're a W two employee trying to transition into being um an entrepreneur or you're thinking about it, whatever, we gave you all the tools, man. So we'll always come back and reference this episode if you're thinking about starting a business, how to do this properly. Yep. We'll catch you guys back here with some lovely ladies in about forty five minutes or so, yep. guys. Do me a favor, like the video. Let's get 3,000 likes before we close this thing out. We'll catch you guys on the next one. Steve's links are below. Go check them out, guys. Peace. Peace. I ran, I ran so far away.